Okay, good evening, everybody. I'll call the uh, February Town of Rochester Town Board meeting to order. Would you stand for the pledge of the flag. <laughs> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Deputy Court, please to do the roll call. Councilman Coleman? Here. Councilwoman Allen? Here. Councilman Paddock? Absent. Councilwoman Smeetson? Here. Supervisor Brady? Here. Okay, also present our attorney for the town, Mary Lou Christiana, by Zoom, and Deputy Town Clerk Christina Ferrara. Um, first resolution will be acceptance of the agenda. I have uh, four ads to it. So the town board accepts the agenda as prepared by the town supervisor as amended to include a discussion on uh, paint recycling requested by the RRA, a discussion on broadband, a discussion on uh, vests for the constabulary, and uh, an added executive session at the end to discuss a uh, particular person with a particular department. I make that motion. Have a second. I'll okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, you probably noticed I changed the order up. Uh, instead of having the public comment after all our uh, liaison reports, I've moved it to the top uh, in, for the people who want to speak and leave. Um, if the board is okay with that, I'm going to continue that. And then I put in a section where if anybody wants to respond from the town board, as I think we had discussed at one time, possibly adding. So we'll try that for the for the moment. So with that, um, I'll open it up to public comment. Um, you guys wish to speak or? I, I, I have not, uh, other than so everybody in here, uh, we, we have our, between 12 there and paid, we have our, our staffing covered 100%. That's that PayPal. Does that mean every hour on the hour? Basically, on shift. Right. I mean, that doesn't have to build in the whole time, but on shift. Okay. We'll be responding 25 based on Great. Well, thank you for that. And, uh, and uh, Steve Sawyer from E5, if, if hopefully we don't need anybody more, but if need be, we'll contact E5 and get more to the schedule. Uh, right now, it's about 90 some hours covered by the volunteers, 78 hours covered by the staff. And, and we, can, we can go either way. We can put more volunteers on. If more step up and, and come to the plate to like the volunteer, we can, we can always take E5 away. You know, we, we can always change the schedule. Yeah. And we can't, we got to get a little advanced notice. We can change the schedule. Okay. Appreciate that. We, we will be talking about the contract later this evening um, for the end of this district. So. Okay. Um, 
Okay, uh, the financial report for January 2023 has been filed with the town clerk. Um, the revenue for the general fund was $56,368.68. The highway fund, $3,718.74. Expenditures with abstract 13, which is December bills that were paid in January. The general fund, $25,835.57. Highway fund, $16,057.09. Street lighting fund, $899.34. And escrow fund, $5,856.24. Abstract one, 2023. The general fund paid $173,141.22. The highway fund paid $110,443.86. The street lighting fund, it was $0. The escrow fund, $0. The escrow closeout was $280. The total expenditures for January 2023, general fund $283,549.85, highway fund $177,991.94. Um, the correspondence report, uh, rather than printing everything, I forwarded a number of emails to you uh, late this afternoon. I do have two documents to share with each of you. Uh, I'll pass those around. We'll take the top two pages and pass, and Aaron, if we put two uh, mm -hmm. atoms. Um, this is uh, from the DOT. Um, every year, we're required to do a local highway inventory update of any changes uh, to our number of roads. Uh, this is how our CHIPS funding is calculated based on the number of miles of roads that we report each year. Um, we also received a, a letter from uh, our new Congressman, uh, Pat Ryan, uh, saying if we, we need to reach out to him, he's giving us his staff's uh, email address and uh, so if you have any issues and want to reach out directly to him, and uh, we'll be sure to share that as well on our website. Um, I think that was it for the things I didn't email you. Um, 2022 supervisor recap. I had hoped to uh, have a much better list of accomplishments for us, uh, but ran out of time today. Uh, we had, for the public, we had no heat in this building until late this afternoon. Uh, the furnace had malfunctioned and Heritage got it back up and running and feels pretty comfortable, but at, this afternoon it was 50 degrees in here. So, uh, so I was a little preoccupied with that. Um, so I'm gonna uh, um, hold that for a later time, my apologies. Uh, grant updates, I have some very good news. Algorithm Firehouse, we have all the final invoices have all been signed. Uh, poor Erin this week, I've been driving her crazy with being my second signature on invoices, but they are all now signed and submitted. Uh, there is uh, a little bit of closeout to do on our end, some final forms, and then it goes into New York Rising's hands. Uh, this building closeout is 100% completed on our end. It is now working its way through the chain of people that have to sign off on it, and uh, that should be completed. I'm guessing by summertime, both projects should be 100% cleared and completed. Uh, the firehouse can be occupied by the fire district as they want, and they will. Uh, we're planning on in March, when it's a little bit warmer, having a uh, open house for the community to be able to see uh, the results of the firehouse. And I think people are gonna be very happy with uh, 
how things turned out, especially the back one room school room, which the ceiling was raised back up to the original height of the ceiling. And uh, it's, it's night and day difference from the room it was two years ago. So it's fun. Uh, and the, the floor to seal floor to ceiling windows are, were replaced and are, are back in it. Well, not quite floor, but counter height to ceiling uh, are back again. Uh, Boyce Mill Bri Road Bridge, no new updates. Uh, the, the company is continuing their design work and uh, their survey work. And uh, Michael, I do want to check your schedule though. We'll just have another voice uh, meeting with them to just check on progress. So if you want to shoot me some dates and times that you're available, we'll have that meeting with them. Uh, the building department code enforcement record conversion is completed. Um, now it's a matter of us filing the final paperwork with them. Uh, we did get half payment up front. Now we final file the final paperwork and we get reimbursed the balance. Um, so that should be coming to us within the next few months. Also update on the ONW rail trail, the OSI, the OSI work, uh, they have completed their uh, construction drawings and have sent them to uh, my office and Jeff and I are meeting with them tomorrow to go over those drawings, uh, particularly the bridge work. Um, and the good news is the superstructure of both bridges on the LNW will probably be able to, to remain and they will just be redoing the, the surfacing and the railings. So uh, considerable cost savings and considerable time savings. So we anticipate going out to bids in spring, construction to start in the summer, to run into the fall, and to be completed by the end of the year. So that is uh, that. Um, I don't think I have any other updates. Uh, Mary Lou? Everything I've got um, will actually be discussed and things later on the agenda. Okay, sounds good. Uh, did Kate give you information? Did. Okay, Town Clerk Tax Collector Report. Town Clerk, still waiting on department reports to complete the monthly. Hope to have it by tomorrow. In the tax collection, as of January 31st, we've collected $5,365,717.95. The 2023 tax warrant for the town has been satisfied in the amount of $2,995,810.83. A big thank you to Christine Farrar and Courtney Coffey for all of their help. And I echo that big thank, thank you. you. The, these ladies do an amazing job at tax time. They never stop moving thank between you. collecting oh, yeah. taxes. And the same, I, I need to give the same kudos to the assessor's office in the month of January and February because it was a constant stream of people coming in with their exemptions. And it even further complicated, the state required us to send out a second notice to people, even if they had already filed their exemption. So we're now having people coming back in to say, what did I do wrong? And the answer is, you didn't do anything wrong. The state just required that we send you a second notice of reminder. Uh, it makes no sense to me, but they they required postcards be sent out in the county, sent them out, but uh, now people were following up. But even yeah. if they filed and it was correct, they got them. Yeah. And we will be getting the bill for that post. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> but it was signed into the fact law that the second notice had to be sent out. So we did. Um, highway superintendent report. Uh, Nothing particularly new to report other than thank you to all our highway workers for all their work on the recent snowstorms. Um, they had quite a few outings, uh, partially for snow, partially for ice. So uh, they continue to do a great job and we thank them. So uh, department updates. Michael, I'm gonna start with you since I usually end with you. Please prepare for nothing written. Uh, so let's see. So ZBA, uh, nothing, nothing to report uh, on that side. Uh, February, so they didn't meet last January. Um, on the spectrum, I, I appreciate you adding that discussion. 
you know, I think I, I sent my update last week to the board. Essentially, everything flipped on its head and prices were inflating by hundreds of percentage points. Um, I'm still getting almost daily emails asking what we want to move forward with. So that's what I want to consensus from the board on in terms of uh, saying we're gonna we're gonna pause for a little bit and, and see what options we have uh, because we're not ready to move forward with these confirmations. Also, still haven't seen any way back. I've asked about the deadlines I think three times, and it's not that I'm not getting responses back. Like I'm not getting response. It's just that we're right. working for that long. Understood. That uh, something we're waiting for. So um, looking forward to seeing what options we have. I, I also think that we can we discuss it as a group. You know, we want to contact other organizations in the state or county and see if they can you know, give us any tips about how we can get that along. Um, in terms of the fire district and uh, uh, EMS, uh, I do call the new, new chief. Um, <laughs> Somehow my timing happened to be uh, while they were in the middle of responding to an active fire. So, you know, uh, we did not get a chance to talk uh, extensively, but I, I do appreciate uh, him taking my call and I plan on, on connecting, discussing what, what uh, possible help we can offer them come here. Uh, I did also speak to uh, Mr. Nelson and uh, he, he actually, um, I know you had some some conversations, um, Chad Dunning, I believe, about some uh, new policies that were passed at the state level right at the end of last year yeah. uh, that are opening up some, some possible exemptions for volunteer uh, first responders. So uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, here it sent me a bunch of information about that. So I looked at that. I read the new state law. Uh, I think it's definitely something that this board should consider uh, looking into. Um, I know there's some uh, specifics that have to be worked out because it's such a new law, but I know Mike, you and I talked about it. Yeah, it's, it's on our agenda here for discussion. Absolutely. So. Yeah, so so I think that's um, looking forward to, uh, to that. Um, I also, Kate had sent me the updated uh, schedule for the uh, district commissioners uh, meeting, so I'm going to try find time to, uh, to get to one of their meetings uh, sometime in the next month or two depending what happens uh, with the family. And um, in terms of the uh, EMS squads, I appreciate KFAS coming here and updating us today. Uh, it's great news to hear that, that there's some additional coverage being provided and that we have full coverage um, in terms of having somebody on call 24 seven. Uh, hopefully we, we get the um, advisory uh, Board stood up today, and uh, we'll have some additional communication between uh, both squads that we can you know, working together <clears throat> and partnering. Um, I spoke to Mr. Diddy with Model Town First Aid Unit. He apologizes; he wanted to try and come here today. Um, he did have some feedback that he sent to us um, that he, he wanted to, to consider for the contract. So hopefully, we can discuss that later today. I think that is everything. Thank you very much. Did pretty well for not prepared then. <laughs> I actually have no time. I, um, Councilman Paddock, my apologies. He had texted me before the start of the meeting and I just saw it. He was uh, back in Connecticut with work and we'll stop later. So, so Charlotte Smith. Uh, so, uh, elder care update. Uh, no news is good news this month. Everyone um, has been, for the most part, staying inside because it's so cold out. Um, but we appreciate the constables and everyone for the elder care program being on call for them if they need them. And then the housing committee, we had our first meeting in January, our first um, introductory meeting, which went up very well. Our next meeting is Tuesday, the 21st. Correct. Yeah, right. Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday the 21st at 6 p.m. here. Um, uh, I'm hoping that Kai looks like he's available as county planner for the housing. Uh, I had a Zoom meeting with him yesterday. It looks like he's going to be available to come and answer some of their questions and just kind of give them an idea on how to do um, where to start and the easier tasks to kind of achieve where to find references and resources. The county has been incentive for being a housing smart community that started to get um, uh, 
hire different um, consultants for us to be able to take advantage of and use for certain certain housing issues. Um, so once we kind of settle with that and find a contract for it, we'll be able to take advantage of those um, for us or for the housing uh, committee. Um, great. You said that's it, six? Six. Um, okay, so code enforcement. Um, all the files that were in box everywhere have been beautifully filed, and the file room looks beautiful and tidy. So I wanted to just say, great job, Alyssa. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Do you know, did they determine that they did receive? Because at one point, Alyssa thought maybe they were missing a box or two. She she did not mention okay. that. I asked her how it went. I'll check with her. Okay. She thought maybe a box or two might have been missing, but okay. she was not. She she seemed very enthusiastic that it was complete. Okay. One thing we <laughs> did discuss is um, there are boxes and boxes and boxes of rolled up maps, and I said that I would maybe help think about uh, some filing solutions for those because in order to look at the map, you have to. Take the box, the box, find the box, pull the box out, take the lid off, and then find the map inside of the box. So there are map organizers. So I was going to get a sense of how many of those we have and maybe what the cost was. They don't seem too expensive, but I think we can find. Are those all scanned? So they were all yes. Yeah. Um, and then I have a monthly report that we put like that. So in the month nice. of January. Um, they issued uh, 11 uh, EOs. They had 27 permits. Um, I, I'm not sure what everything is, but 21 miscellaneous correspondences, six municipal searches, three violations, and then they did uh, inspections. <laughs> so they had six home inspections, three mobile home inspections, 22 additions, which I thought was, four garages, 19 short-term rentals, and nine fire safety inspections. They oh, also, that's short-term rental inspections. Yeah. yeah. They also, um, I believe so, the way this is. Yeah, I believe that's, that's inspections. Not because me. they yeah, don't yeah. have um, a line item for the rental permits. Um, then they did nine office permits. So um, I have this and I have the detail month report that shows what day things were done. If the board would like any more detailed information, Alyssa would, is, would be happy to give that to us. To inspect you? Yeah. Okay. Um, I can forward that to you. I think it's interesting. The uh, the six um, sorry, I'm blank on the home basic, inspections. Oh, no, oh, the municipal searches. Municipal searches. Normally, that's considerably higher. Yeah. But I guess it's also the when the this time of year. Yeah. People are not. Yeah. Looking for new homes this time of year, but um, at one point we were getting well into the double digits like 20 or 30 in a month right the and the office took in fourteen thousand ninety one dollars of permits and that's about average so um so this is just the general report um that gets it's starting it's going to be filed with the clerk so uh Alyssa will be sending that to me and if there's any additional information we'd like each month she can include that in the correspondence could you also, um, we, back back in the day, we used to get that report when it was filed to the clerk's office, right. filed monthly with us. Could you also, the two of you, follow up with the, the um, planning department to have them do mm -hmm. a similar thing? Yeah. It's, all we really need is a copy of the report that they filed with the uh, court. Yeah, department. I can do. I'm actually yeah. looking at the report um, yeah. with Kira the other day because she doesn't have the. Um, the records of previous reports that didn't get oh. sent over when Fish made an account for her. So okay. we were strategizing. She needs the template I can do. She has the template. She just doesn't have the same files. Um, but yeah, I can follow up with her. But we were just looking at that together. Perfect. 
Um, and if we need to tweak any of those, I have the master and I can fix those. I think she she seemed to have got how to use it. Okay. She was just looking for a record. Okay. Sorry, um, I didn't mean to it's okay. want to lose that. <laughs> um for the transfer station. Uh it's, it's going to be very cold, and I'm aware of this for all of our employees that work outside, but I I made sure that they knew to not be outside too long uh, the next couple of days because it's probably going to be like close to zero when they go into work on Saturday morning. So um, we discussed that. Um, what I have for the transfer station is uh, they're eager to do some improvements. Um, Justin has cleared out one of the storage um, trailers and would really like to be able to have electronics placed there. Um, so Mike, what he's requesting is to be able to put down, uh, with Harry's help, a plywood floor Absolutely. on that. So he asked me how to do that. And I said, well, I know there's money in the budget for plywood. so." It would just be a matter of coordinating with your office and your Harry. And with Harry, okay. and with Jeff, and just find out when Harry's available. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, we there's funding in there for for professional yeah. services, which is great. What that sort of falls under. Great, and then recently uh, the roll up door in the garage was somewhat fixed, but I wanted to just circulate this around the table. Um, I was hoping we could start prioritizing that building replacement um, because it's, um, we know from the building condition survey that it's not in good shape and uh, it might not be super safe. So um, they have been advised not to use that door. Um, yeah, and um, Jeff thought it would be as simple as putting the cables back on the track and it is not right. uh, because the building is not square, square anymore, yeah. it's settled. And so the company that Jeff was working with will not guarantee any work they do. So I asked Jeff or I asked Seth to have Jeff go to our, the other door company that we occasionally use. Yeah, this is what I got today. Yeah. They're, they're not willing to give us a quote um they're just they listed a bunch of parts they think it needs but so yeah yeah but it really but I'm, I'm, yeah it's I'm, the left side for me that that's one an infrastructure oh, issue sorry. that we i would like them to be aware of that yes we should really start prioritizing um they i'm also going to be seeing if it's possible to get new signage from the ucra because our recycling signs are kind of worn and out of date. So I'm on that, I sent that email today. And then I was hoping we could schedule this tour with the new um, executive director. I think our staff is also eager to do something like that. Yep. If you want to get some dates and time to let me know. Okay, rather yeah, than, I'll do that. Yeah, rather than yep. me trying to organize the yeah. yep. uh, What's the What's the plan with the electronics? The plan is, so right now it gets piled up and then when they amass enough, they palletize it in the boxes and, and then put it in that trailer because the company that picks it up um, has, has to have a either um, they back up, they back up to it and use their pallet jack. But we, we pallet that. We do. You know. And then we have to get it up there. So, um, it, but what happens is the big pile and then the staff has to put it in these boxes. So what Justin's idea was was to, so it doesn't get weathered, put the boxes on the pallet inside of this empty trailer that he's cleaned out. And people can they can just go straight in there. And with the protection, we can't allow people to go up in that truck body that's four feet or six feet off the ground. But this one you could just put things in and then they'd be getting palletized as they're getting dropped off. And then we just forklift. And then there. forklift from there into the company. Oh, so they'll put it in the front of that. Mm -hmm. okay. So the company then comes and they just pack up truck to truck and they take the pallet jack and move it over. Uh, we don't we don't charge any fee for electronics because we don't uh, get charged a fee. The company comes, takes it, 
the only fees incurred with us is the palletizing, but we have a rotational type of thing with the pallets. So it's like they bring us some empty ones or we, we grab some that end up going into our waste cycle. Yeah. And, you know, so. Um, yeah, I, just, I wanted to make sure we weren't leaving that people like rowing stuff and trailing. No, no that's the, the goal is to have the, so right now they don't, they can't bring the boxes out because they get weathered. So it just gets piled and then one day they spend of hours traveling. This way they can have the box, it's like a big giant pallet side box on the pallet and then it can stay in there without being wet. So that's just the idea. And um, he's had this idea for a while and, they, and now the space is cleaned out and he just wants to put a floor in and have various help. And so, me. Yeah, me right. too. Um, and then they also had a great idea, which I said I supported and oh, would invest yeah. in. When that. you're done, I just have a quick note about this. <laughs> um, that they um, we were just talking about how to keep things tidy, and they were suggest the whole staff suggested that the metal recycling bin get moved to the more difficult access, and the three. MSW bins get put all in a row. And um, I ran by Jeff. He said he thought that was a great idea. So I'm just going to look at our contract to make sure. See if they are. I think I have to let them know. See. Maybe like an updated map, and I'll make sure that happens. And then uh, we already communicated with Don. He said that that was fine. That's I wonder good. if the RA will move the metal bit for us. Yeah. Maybe and maybe will not. we also talk? Don happened to call while we were having this discussion. He does this stuff, so. And um, they are they ran it by him, and he was like, "Oh, that's a smart idea." Yeah. So, and then that way, people, uh, people residents don't have to hill. go up the hill quite as often, which is not something that people enjoy doing that much. So, um, I said that I would take care of the technical aspects of it, and then we will. Take care. What I was going to say is, if, if you could. Uh, I, by the end of February, I have to do our recycling oh, yeah. report, yep. uh, which I have no issues doing and do it every year. But the couple pieces of data that I need to get that yep. I don't ever know quite who to go and to. I, and I figured that out last yeah. year, and I have all the contacts in my phone now. Good. So it's the um, the metal I have. What I need is the electronics, the propane tanks, and the um, the clothing. Clothing, yes, thank you. Oh, and and the uh, and the deposit and the deposit bottles, yep. approximately. Yep. Yep, I've got all that. Um, and they want it in tons. So, yes. Yep. So. That's not fun. Um, oh, and then one more thing. Uh, since Mike and I are on the recycling oversight committee, we got invited to a public session on a reuse innovation center. The county hired consultants to start doing planning work for what that would entail to really increase the, reduce our county waste output and increase the amount of recyclables and um, other types of products. They have some very ambitious goals. So that will be a Zoom um, presentation that I'll attend. Yeah, I'll share the invite um, if anybody else wants to join in. Is that like a tour type thing? It's a, no, it's a presentation. Presentation the from the consultant. But is that they're proposing setting up some kind of like reuse facility? Yes. Similar yes. to what New Pulse is doing and kind of what we were doing. But on a on grand a scale. scale. But also a grand scale. Like we're talking <laughs> like mattress recycling and, you know. Um, so, yes, that's great and exciting. Um, I don't really have much to report for the planning board. They, they've they been really working hard to streamline their processes, and um, I think we'll be working with some different consultants in the coming months. We actually can, can announce. So, okay, great. Um, yeah, so... Um, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We firmed it up yesterday. Okay, great. So, um, David Church, who is the former planning, Orange County Planning Director, who is a... a working as a consultant and does the town of Ulster, as well as he's worked with town of Gardner. He worked with us on a couple projects. He is, uh, will be coming 
the new town planner, Clark Patterson Lee, who was doing that, is going to transition to strictly engineering okay. analysis. Um, and we have the new uh, attorneys, Gordon and Svensson, who have started as of January. So uh, Dave will be, um, CPL will be finishing up the projects that they're in, in progress already. And it will be a transition uh, Dave Church will be doing the newer ones, and then ultimately uh, CPL's been with us since oh, 2007, I want to say, 2006 they started as our town planner, and uh, it's just time to move on. They've become a much bigger firm, uh, so um, I, think, I think having a little more smaller type firm, you know, it, it's a one one person operation, and, and the planning board unanimously agreed to that change. So, so is he just going to do individual projects, or is there a larger no. planning? No, he will be the planning consultant for the planning board on review of all their projects, which is what CPL has been doing. Um, it's just with a bigger firm comes a bigger price tag. Uh, I had asked them to look at it, and I sort of felt that it was getting a little too expensive for our applicants and uh, so they interviewed and were very happy with his his uh, interview and have moved forward. And the, the, the costs will come out of escrow payments, so it's not, we're not. Right. It's not it's something we have to approve because it's a, it's, it's a pay as they if, go. If the board ever wanted to engage in his services for something other than an application that was being covered under escrow, then we would need to do that. But it's um, we so wouldn't have to pay with that. No. Not for a, not for a, a consultant like that. Yeah. Professional yeah. services. And I think what they because they'll be retaining CPL for engineering, which is much more technical and complicated. Um, they'll still have that option, but David Church will do. They have like a simple kind of review process that they agreed upon that he will perform mm -hmm. for them. I think it's, I'm excited to see. It is, and I think it's out. a. I think it's a good change. We were hearing from a number of our applicants that they thought the costs were a little excessive, and I have to say I was starting to agree. Um, so I think this is a a little more manageable. Okay, and then um, the ECC. Um, we had our. They had the first meeting of 2023 at the Samsonville Firehouse because we had a conflict with the community center. So I wanted to thank the fire uh, department for hosting that. Um, the members loved it there so much that they asked me to investigate whether or not we could hold meetings there permanently. So- Okay with me. I, <laughs> I've, already, yep, so I've already, yep, um, I've, well, I've been, I'm getting introduced to, to the contacts there. Um, Alyssa was very helpful in helping me coordinate the, this one meeting. Um, but it would also open the community center up one more night a month, which I think would be good. So, um, but they were, everyone was, I thought at first they were upset with me and then they were like, because we love it here. And I was like, oh, great. Um, we had three prospective members in attendance, um, which was fantastic. It was a full house. Um, there was a presentation from Angela Sisson from the uh, Wallkill on creating an official pollinator pathway chapter in the town of Rochester. Um, I was a former member of our that time. Oh, really? Um, I, I No, I think she's, I think you're thinking of a different okay. um, Angela. Um, and so I emailed Mary Lou, just some technical questions. They cool. haven't decided whether or not they want to do this, but it's, um, it's a grassroots organization that promotes turning your lawn into a pollinator habitat. Um, and so they would like to engage in this as an official town sponsored group. Um, we also, there was also a discussion in the ECC about taking over the bag collection that was happening at the community center, what that would entail. We had a lot of a lively discussion about that and some great plans came out of it. Um, mostly that it would be like a one, once a month event that, so that they didn't have to have something that was monitored. Um, I spoke with the, uh, transfer station employees about 
the logistics of having ECC volunteers take bags for a couple of hours on a Saturday, and they seem like probably do it off when you come exactly. in off to the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we we had a, a great discussion about that. So I think I'll bring that back to the ECC as an option. Um, we okay. also. Well, we're not, you know, we stopped collecting. Yeah, we're, we're no longer collecting um, bags here. We got this, we're on the second bench, that's done. And so now we're transitioning to a new iteration. The question on that though, is it still through the program or is the program ended? Because the program I... hasn't ended, but um, the Lions Club no longer wants to uh, do that, but we can. Like the ECC can. We can do it direct yes. through through tracks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if tracks was ending the program. No, they're not. It's just the I think it was a great thing that was happening a lot during COVID. And now I think everyone's ready to get on to their lives. What about all the bags in my car? You hold on to them. There will be a collection event for how long? Like a month if it costs. Um and if not. Well, so in my garage with the garbage bag. Right. Okay, and then so. Mary Lou, I I also forgot to email you this question. We had some questions about cor a quorum because um, the ECC can have between in the law it says three to nine members, and we have four members who are active. No, and so we weren't sure. Um, they weren't sure what constituted a quorum or how they could vote That's on things. Really are seated at the moment, whether they're active or not. Right. Very right. Well. So uh, how many members are currently appointed to the board? Well, I think we'll have to, we'll have to get seven. that answer. We'll have to get that answer. I think it's seven, but right. there are okay. five active members. Right. It, but it doesn't go on active. It goes on total. Exactly. So there are seven uh, appointed. We have two vacancies. So they don't have any 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 official. Uh, I was going to say in our ability. So if they were just like approving minutes or you know whatever that. So. I have to look at our our section that um, actually sets up the committee for commission and see if there's anything in there. Okay. And it's also allowed by by state law, so I'll look in that as okay. well. Great. Do you want me to send you a follow-up email, Mary Lou? I would love if you would do okay, that. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. And I'll try to determine what the actual membership number is. It because... says three to nine in the No, way. I mean a... no, but who are oh, how oh, many are currently... currently got it. Right. Um, so and then uh the third Thursday this month, I don't they didn't address it at the meeting, but I know it's on uh neonics or neonicotinoids, which are the um, pesticides that uh, kill pollinators. Yeah. But that's, I know that's the topic. Don't have any other details. Good. That's it. Longest squeeze on the court. That's ever. okay. You know, there's a lot going on, and I thank you guys for all. And I, I apologize for asking questions as we go, but it's we're all kind of sort of working the same path sometimes. Yeah. Um, I will read the constabulary report <laughs> since Mr. Uh, Councilman Paddock is not here. They answered 16 calls for service in January. That included 12 neighbor to neighbor, quality of life complaints, four traffic complaints, two environmental complaints. Four, they issued four new building department violations. And actually to be clarified, they delivered. Our constabulary does not issue building violations. They deliver them on behalf of the code enforcement office. And uh, somebody questioned if they were allowed to issue, and they are not issuing their delivery. Um, there were no new court cases opened. Uh, nine remain open. Uh, the interesting occurrences, uh, complaints have decreased slightly. Short-term rental properties continue to generate complaints, especially on Fridays and weekends. They generate complaints about trespassing, noise, block, road and driveway blockages, and household trash dump. Uh, they're working with the building department on those interviews. Uh, 
They received a call about two individuals who entered a dangerous condemned property. Uh, upon further investigation, it turned out to be a charity that was going to remove furniture and items from the property, but the building is declared unsafe, and so they were not allowed to enter and they left without a problem. Uh, neighbor to neighbor complaints have increased slightly, but all have been reduced. So that is the constabulary report. Um, as far as the recreation department, uh, the basketball program continues. Uh, I've learned we have 180 participants. Uh, to let the board know, uh, it was briefly halted this week. Uh, there was an issue with some vandalism of the school, uh, not in an area that the town has control over, but it occurred, they were able to determine because of the cameras, it did occur during the basketball time frame, uh, we believe it was uh, older brother or sister, uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, of uh, some of the participants who went off on their own and went behind the school and did some damage to the outside of the building. Uh, there also was an altercation in the parking lot between two people who were there, um, an argument. A, a verbal altercation. Um, but the school, I had a very good meeting this morning with the principal and Ashley and I met. And um, we are instituting a, at the school's request, a code of conduct that all participants will now be signing, all who enter to observe as, as spectators will sign. It's a one time signing thing. Once you sign it, it's kept on file. You don't have to sign it every time you come. But we just want to remind people that it is a privilege that the school lets us use that gym free of charge, I have to add. Um, they don't even charge us for the custodians because they are on staff already. Um, and we want to respect that privilege and respect their property. So we're working hard with them. Uh, the the um, coordinator of the program, Mike Smith, is going to, at each game, moving forward, have a brief announcement speech to the people in the stands and just remind them, the police themselves, there were issues where people were leaving garbage outside the school. Um, they were bringing like, you know, full meals in and then throwing the garbage to the side as they were leaving. So we're just trying to be better better neighbors, um, very positive conversation. And, and you know, it was, they were all ready to begin it again tonight. So they paused it from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, while we kind of resolved all these issues. Um, there was never a danger that they were gonna pull it. They just wanted to say, stop, we need to do this. So I guess also one of the nets was damaged by his hand. <laughs> I know every kid who wants to try to dunk is going to, I'm going to jump up and get the net and hang off. So I did tell them we would replace the, the, any nets that were damaged uh, at our cost. And uh, that was well received. So just to let you know, if you hear of anything about it, you know, people say, why was it canceled? It was just put on a little hold while we resolved these issues that we've all moved forward. So. And I did have the code of conduct reviewed by both Mary Lou and our uh, insurance um, carrier just to make sure there was nothing in there that was a problem and they both had no issues with you. So, um, and it's just, uh, this is how we expect you to, to behave while you're here. Um, they are in lieu of the line dancing classes, which are not happening while the instructor recovers from uh, minor surgery. Um, we are now one of the uh, women has volunteered, Carol Metzger has volunteered and is doing an embroidery class. Uh, they held the first one last Wednesday, very well attended. And uh, for the next six or eight weeks, he's going to do that on Wednesdays in place of the line dancing. Um, the, the yoga and the uh, senior exercise class continue to be packed. They uh, did two paint classes 
Um, you can see some of the results. The, these were from the youth paint class and the ones that you saw last meeting were from the, uh, uh, I don't think any are still out here anymore. From the adult class, the trees, yes. Yes. And the snowman was the uh, was the youth class that took place uh, this this week. So they're trying to do those once a month, and uh, they continue to get a really good turnout. So uh, all exciting stuff. Um, I'm sure there's something else I'm forgetting, but uh, we will be. It's a little ways away, but we will be doing the St. Patrick's Day uh, luncheon. Uh, I don't know the exact date. Uh, it's usually a Friday, very close to St. Patrick's Day, but uh, actually, I think that this year Friday is St. Patrick's Day, so it may actually be on St. Patrick's Day. So there you go. And uh, assessor's report. Um, yeah, and Aaron, if you put one in Adam's folder there, so. Um, he continues reviewing and approving the exemptions as they come in. Um, our assessor aide has been reaching out directly to the property owners who have not submitted their exemptions by phone. I will say it's been, I, I hear her on the phone with them and it's been very successful and they do appreciate it. Uh, they're entering new building permits, uh, certificate of compliance, certificate of, of uh, operation. Uh, they're working on processing sales. They're issuing 911 addresses uh, when requested. Uh, they're dealing with many address changes, as often happens when, when the tax bills come out. A lot of people come in and go, oh, I should have changed my address. Or, I have a PO box now. Or this is where my tax bill should be set. So uh, it triggers many address changes. Uh, he's been taking photos and sketching and inspecting new construction renovations. Uh, they're working on placing a value on new construction. And this is the second notice. Uh, second notice notifying property owners of the senior citizen exemption was sent via postcard. So that's the lovely one that we can thank the state for. Um, also, he is in process of talking with New York State about our equalization rate that will be assessed to us as of July of this year. And the sad news is it looks like it's gonna go down again from the 72% to 60 something. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like everybody's going down, including Marble Town and Rosendale, at similar percentages. So I don't have exact numbers, it's preliminary discussions. The way it works is, the state sort of suggests their number and we get a chance to counter that and defend our decision and it's a negotiation process of some degree. But ultimately it's what the state says. Uh, that's it. Um, can't think of any other reports. So any board members have anything to bring up? And thank you for saying that. And I did see that the town, the county clerk, who does very great presentations, in, and I believe it's in the county office building, but I'm not 100% sure where this one is, did one on Peg Lake Bates. And for people who don't know, um, Peg Lake Bates Resort was here in, in uh, Kerhansen and was one of the first uh, black resorts in in the United States and uh, was a very uh, important person in our community to the point that 209 from Kingston all the way down to the end is named the Peg Lake Bates Memorial Highway. But, uh, um, I saw in the Freeman, I believe, that the county court had a display somewhere. Uh, I missed exactly where. But, it's uh, in it's in the county office building. Thank you very much. It had I think it might it had one day in Kingston City Hall and then it went to the county office building. Thank you. Now that you okay. say that, I remember reading that. I, I, and I, I was lucky enough to be acquainted with him. I wouldn't say I knew him, but I was acquainted with him. What a great guy. Okay, uh, moving forward. 
Action on the resolutions, action on the minutes, and I had to admit I did not get a chance to read them. So if anybody else did, that's great. If not, we could table them. So Town of Rochester Town Board accepts the minutes of the January 3rd organizational meeting, January 5th and January 26th public hearings, January 5th business meeting, January 17th special meeting, the January 18th workshop meeting, and the January 26th audit meeting as presented. We can accept them and if we catch a mistake. Yeah, yeah, I skimmed them, but I thought I was good. So I'll make the motion. I'll take it. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I will try to get to them. Kate sent them out yesterday and I just did not get time to read them. Um, acceptance of donations. I have the email. Yeah. And asks uh, accepts donation of one hundred and forty two dollars and forty four cents from St. Pauli Textile, one hundred dollars from Arlene Levine. If there's an extra copy, I need one. Um, Fifty dollars from Elaine and Mel Tapper, and sixty five dollars in various cash donations from the senior breakfast. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Ashley did send me the total for St. Pauli for the year in the amount of money plus the amount of tons of clothes. I neglected to make a copy of that, but I'll share that with you guys by email because they're the people at the clothing drop box out here. They do a really great service. Um, so. um, next was the request from the ECC. Um, I tried to forward the email to everybody and it was large and wouldn't let me. Um, yeah, oh, here it is. This is the email that they sent uh, requesting. So, um, we're not necessarily approving the work or the, 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 the cost they give us the cost estimate, but so the request is on request of the ECC, Town of Rochester Town Board authorizes the town supervisor and budget officer to hold over the allocated $1,800 unexpended funds of budget line 2022 general fund A8710400 conservation an increase to 2023 general fund budget lines, revenue A599 appropriate fund balance by $1,800 and general fund expenditure A8710400 conservation by 1800 And uh, this is a little bit of a detail of what they're proposing. So I have a question. Have a second. Oh, second. Any questions or discussion? Um, I just wonder, um, I have a parent Underneath the bulletin board, the private rail trail, if we could use the ECC to do I think we can do that with volume. With volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah and except before we do anything there, we're, gonna replace, we're, gonna, we're, we're probably going to replace getting. all that yeah. with the. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's what I was just wondering. I'm sure we can. Um, I know my 4H is off of the thing. Yeah, 4H reviews the plan file. I was just looking at that. Yeah. That was my only question. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Close. Okay. Um, electrical inspector designation. We received the request. Um, I have the full printout, which is like 40 pages long. I didn't print that for everybody. I did print, though, a copy of the letter of the draft for you all. Um, this is something we have to do to add them to our list. So on request of the building department, Town of Rochester Town Board authorizes the addition of New York Electrical Inspectors, Inc. 809 Highland Laker Road, Middletown, New York 10940 to the list of Town of Rochester approved third party electrical inspectors. And they did send me all their certificates of insurance as well with their request. So here's the, if you wanna look at it, Here's the 40 plus page documents. Did, did I forward it to you in email? I think it was, 
I thought I did, but I was Okay. Do I have that motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, next, we have a request for the use of the community center building. I will pass that around. Let's see if the Town of Rochester Town Board authorizes Tina Bergen Russell to host a clothing exchange sponsored by the Town of Rochester on the second Sunday of each month at the Herald of the Community Center, provided no materials are to be stored or shall remain at the Community Center. Um, I'll make the motion and then I'll explain. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll second. Okay. Um, this is our resident who runs the exchange at the transfer station. She originally brought this idea to me at the transfer station. And then we talked with Kate and thought we could do it here. What she will do is people will bring stuff or she will collect it, bring it here. At the end of the, each day, anything that is left, she will put into the bed in there. So... Nothing will be, she's very aware. By us, I did check it with our insurance agent. By us sponsoring it, it's covered as a volunteer type of thing. There is no liability of any type with us, you know, sort of sharing clothes with other people. She believes, and I, I would agree, that it could be a very worthwhile thing. <laughs> so we try it, see where it goes. And we did confirm that the space is also. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I'll there. yeah. there's, no, there's no cost involved and it will strictly be run by volunteers and it will be managed in that, you know, it, we'll, we'll make sure that things don't get left. That was my one concern is that we didn't become a clothing deposit here. Oh, and I, I think I think it's a great idea too. I just, I want to make sure they have like procedures where stuff is getting washed. Like I don't want something coming like direct from an attic in the weird that might happen. Fair enough. Yeah. You know. Infestation. Okay, like I'll I'll talk to her about that. See how we handle that. Okay. Um, any other questions or discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, I circulated with you guys last week the request here from the highway superintendent, and I do yes. have some new information on that to share with you, but. Town of Rochester Town Board authorizes purchase of a 2023 New Holland E57C mini excavator from Westchester Tractor Incorporated, 60 International Boulevard, Brewster, New York, 10509, in the amount of $90,702.27. Purchase is being made utilizing the source well bid and is 100% reimbursable from the 2023-2024 New York State Chips Fund. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. In talking with the highway superintendent today, he had indicated that the one ton dump truck he would take off the, the budget, which was approximately 70000 He indicated to me today that the pickup, he will uh, remove that as well, which was approximately forty to forty five. I don't remember the exact amount. So that would be about 110 to 115000 which essentially would be a swap for this, and we would actually gain eighteen to twenty thousand back in from chips. So we won't know until April what our 2023-2024 chips funding is. The governor's did have their mess her message, her budget proposal yesterday. Um, but chips funding is not specifically broken down in that budget proposal. But there's no indication that anything is going to lessen. If anything, they might increase the platform program. So, what time did you talk to? Um, to him? He called me late this afternoon. Oh, okay. So that was after I said yes. That. So that's a new yes. Okay, that's because he was saying we yeah. could make. He felt like they're okay. Yeah. Okay. He he said to me. I said, did you talk to any of the board members? He said, I talked to Charlotte, I talked to Aaron, and I said, did you mention this? And he said, no, this is new. Okay. So he is okay. offering to take to remove those from the budget. This would be inserted into the budget. Um, and that would actually leave us, I will have to figure out exactly, but approximately 18 to 20,000 to move elsewhere from the anticipated check. Okay, great. Yeah, that I Probably he'll yeah. move it to Rhodes. Okay. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I was I was wondering that. So so both of those vehicles were originally intended to be ships reimbursed. Yes. Yeah. And what? So I didn't get a, a chance to talk to, to Jeff about this. I'm on the phone today, but it's fine. Um, so why are we changing from the two vehicles to this? He he decided uh, after the budget was made that it would be more important to get the excavator. Um, I don't know his reasoning for I, that. I asked him this. Yeah. I can okay, that. if you want to, yeah. So we have one mini excavator that is a 2018 mini excavator. We have so similar to it's the same one, it's exactly but the same five one. years older. It is deployed every day, it's above freezing. That excavator is doing work because they have so much ditch work that they have to do. They have another excavator, a cat excavator that's bigger and 20 years old and costs a lot to repair. He said they tend to, every time they bring it out, they tend to have to do repair. And they, he doesn't bring it out because of that issue. And it's also bigger, so he can't use it in the same way. So he said rather than getting the vehicles, he doesn't feel like he needs those. But if he was able to have two crews out doing ditch work, uh, they'd be able to keep up with the, the level of work they have to do in order to then I didn't realize this was a replacement too. We could also ask him if he would consider letting us put the other one up on auction yeah. site. Um, we, he, yeah, he said that he just does that. It's on its way out, and he doesn't like using it. It's bigger. He can't do everything, but he would the cat one. The cat one. Yeah, yeah. The other and one they use, use and, one. and also he it they use it almost every day. And with this being exactly the same as the other one, is parts are interchangeable. Yes, so that's the other reason why he wanted to get. We're ordering one, one type of part. Much like all our trucks, we order the same type of truck now. And, and so so we can stock up on parts and they're, they're more or less interchangeable. So um, so with that information, we could potentially even reap some revenue from the sale of that auction of that other SDK. So. Exactly. It does, yeah. I'm, um, he said to me, he thought he could put the trucks off for another year. He put them in the budget with the anticipation that in the next few years, he would need to replace them. And he was looking to do that, but he now believes the excavator is more important. Yeah, because yeah, that, that's that's the other thing I was wondering. Do we have an inventory of all the equipment they have? Absolutely. Yep. Could you, could you uh, share that? Well, we have an inventory. I don't know that we have an inventory. Yeah, that, that's what I'd be curious about tonight if we're both. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much when the highway superintendent provides their budget. That's, you know, that's sort of their purview. Um, because different people have different opinions. The former, former superintendent was more repair, repair, repair. Whereas the highway superintendent before Jeff was more or less replaced and definitely bought three new trucks. But in the long run, I think that that was a better idea because we were spending an awful lot of money. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, yeah, he it was a change of change of thought after the budget was made. But now that the fact that it's sort of a budget neutral, and actually it's a it's a budget positive, uh, I I'm not I don't yeah I don't really want to question his judgment. And I did also I didn't actually know how chips worked. And Jeff took the time oh, to explain yeah. it to me with there's like a certain amount you can use on equipment. Yeah. And then the, there's these different three different categories. One of them you can use on equipment, the other two you cannot. So so tips so money limit yeah. to how much equipment you can buy. So it's all sort of lumped together and called chips, but it's actually chips funding, extreme winter mm -hmm. recovery funding for it's EWR. Possible. And now the Pothole New York program, and there is another one. I forgot my notes. Yeah. You told me. yeah. So yeah. there were three, and now the Pothole New York is added. And the chips funding you can use, you can use for equipment. We traditionally didn't used to. When uh, Tony Spano came in, we did use it more for, for equipment, and I'm glad now that we do. Um, and he said that's usually about yeah. two hundred thousand. Yeah. We we. Um, we used to leave money on the table. 
quite frankly. So, so if, if you don't it. use equipment, does it go over to the other yes, category? Yes, then, yeah. yeah, that's why he doesn't want to use more. He well, said today he didn't want to use more. It doesn't go to the other categories. So the chips money can be used for equipment or roads. Is it use it or lose it, I guess? Like you, it is use it or lose it, but you can use you that can roll it fund. Over for two years. Yeah, you, you can use that fund okay. to do roads okay. also, but the other one is roads. only roads. Got it. So the pothole in New York is only roads. Extreme winter recovery is, is more about repairs of roads that were damaged due to the frost heaving and, and the weather changes. And then the other one is only roads as well. But with roads, you can do things like guardrails, resurfacing. You can only do equipment in the in the chips highway funding. The, yeah, the, the for me the sticking point was equipment is like a limited thing. So they're making a choice every year what equipment is going to be the most useful in doing the road works for. And when he he has to issue with us every spring his 285 agreement, which is essentially he has to outline where he's going to spend the money. <clears throat> the budget occurs, but 285 agreement is, is done in May, I believe. Uh, well, that's when we do it. it. It actually, I think it's supposed to, by law, maybe it was earlier, but we usually do it in May. Where he outlines, I'm going to spend this number, this amount of money on resurfacing this road, and a lot of it is he doesn't totally know until he sees where things come out of, out of the winter and into the spring, where he's going to decide which roads are the higher priority to be serviced. And then once you use chips money to do a road and you sign off as it's complete, you can't use chips money on that road again for a certain number of years. Right. But you can do it in phases. You could do Repairs one year and a resurfacing another year, but you can't. Once you, if you do resurfacing and you say it's complete, you can't then like go back and do potholes on that road. You chips from. And I, I know Jeff couldn't make it here tonight. Is is there a reason we want to do this right now? Is it? A, he needs to order it now because we won't get it built tomorrow. So he needs to order it now in order. To you know, it's like the truck that we ordered in 2022 that we won't get till 2024. So he needs to order this now so we get it in the summer. Yeah. We'll we'll take delivery in the summer and then this will go on our August yeah. chips. That's the other thing that um yeah. that's what he said is it should come the money for this batch of things should come to the August. Yeah. So personally and just philosophically, I would love if we could, when we have things like this that come up, if we can have the highway superintendent in here to discuss with the entire board. Just, and I know this was like an extenuating circumstance, but Aaron asked great questions to people. Charlie asked great questions. I like to hear what other people ask, and I just think having it in public is yep. better. I, I, all I can do is request. I, I did ask him if he yeah. could come, and yeah, I know he said he wasn't able. We did talk about that, and he said that he'd like to make at some more meetings, so I can try to reach out to him at our next business meeting. Great. And I understand that. That's part of why I made sure you guys had it last week, so you at least had a week to try to get to him and ask him any specific questions you might have. So, but I think you got to get an answer to the fact that. And by adding the truck, to me, it makes a big difference. It does, yeah. yeah. And now, if we, if, if we're, I didn't even realize that we weren't using that piece of equipment. So, if we're not utilizing it, we probably should try to sell it. I don't want to misquote what you okay. said. I'll reach out. 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 Okay. But yeah, you should check in with him about it. Well, it was like the road grader that we, that we had that sat around for 10 years, twice in 10 years. Yeah. We probably sold it. We got $9,000. Right. Dollars. right. So, uh, Have we named it yet? No. That's just a plan. Okay. Yeah. It didn't snow. Okay. And thanks for that. Everybody all set? No. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, next, we need to set our public hearing for the subdivision law. Um, the town of Rochester says, I left it open. I didn't know if you wanted to.
continue doing it at our workshop. I mean, our audit meeting, if you want to do it. At, so I don't have any at this point, right? So far, this will be the first this one. This is the first one. So it will be February uh, second, twenty third. 2023 at, um, so, well, we want it. So our audit meetings are now at 6.30 because that's what time we set them at. If we do the public hearing at six, we can't do the audit meeting until 6.30 unless we, by resolution, say the audit meeting is due to the follow up. Or we can do the public hearings at 6.30. I think we should just do a resolution to have it set after the public hearing. I think okay. that would be easier. I mean, the subdivision one is like yeah. We made them all. Si we made them all six thirty. All the meetings because you guys wanted a consistent time. Yeah, so I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> what do you want? Consistent time. I would rather just, just do the public hearing at six thirty and do the audit meeting. Well, I just feel like subdivision is the one that people might show up to. Comment on um, out of all the ones we've been working on lately, we might get a few people. That's why I was thinking. True. Six. Well, and that's why I left it blank for you guys to decide. I think we should do it. Do a resolution to have the uh, budget meeting immediately. Um, or the audit meeting immediately after the public hearing. So you, so we should have what Councilman Coleman was saying, he likes having it at six thirty. She wants to do it at and six. No, the audit is like I'm saying because this is like she wants to do the public hearing. I want the hearing at six, and then because you think people are going to come. I think people might come for the subdivision one, yeah, to comment more so than we got on some of the other zoning laws that aren't necessarily as. So you don't think they'll come at six thirty? No, I think they will, but then that will. She thinks that will delay the audit. Oh yeah, I got a baby. She's being strategic. I got a baby. We can just do it at six thirty. Six is good. <laughs> so well, I, it, for the public, I I'd almost rather just call this. That's fine. We can do it if it's I I if we get comments, we I don't okay. care with that. You saw we got seven minutes of comments at the last public. So. That's okay. Fine. So the resolution then will read: the Town Board, Town of Rochester Town Board, sets February twenty third. 2023 at 6.30 p.m. at the Harold Lifton Community Center, T. Tobacco Road, Accord, New York. Four, and that shouldn't say two public hearings, it should say four public hearing of Local Law A of 2023, amending Chapter 125 subdivision of the Town of Rochester Code and request the town court circulate notice of the public. I'll make that move. I'll second. second. Um, the county reviewed it last night and they had two advisory comments. No, they had no advisory comments. And it was a no county impact. So they had no, they thought this thought would be a good word. I don't know if I can make that a lie. You're like, yeah, sure. It sounds good, guys. Um, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, uh, Housing Smart Communities Interactive. Um, does the board want me to read the whole resolution? I can read it pretty quickly. So this is the model resolution from the county. I think we probably should, it's a new thing. So. Whereas the town of Rochester believes that rising housing and rental costs and the lack of diverse housing opportunities for all community members pose a significant challenge to the members of our community. Whereas affordable housing is defined as housing in which the occupant is paying no more than 30% of monthly or annual income for housing costs, including utilities. Whereas ensuring there are affordable housing options for all community members is a key responsibility of the elected officials of the town of Rochester and a critical component of creating a healthy, sustainable, prosperous community. Whereas rising Housing and rental costs and a lack of diverse housing opportunities for all community members is in part due to demand for housing, far exceeding supply of new affordable and workforce housing being developed in the community. Whereas a long-term commitment by the town of Rochester to review and approve new affordable and workforce housing projects is a critical strategy 
for ensuring there are affordable housing options for all community members. Whereas working toward housing solutions is a priority for the well being of the local residents, the economy, and community sustainability. Whereas we believe that our response to housing challenges provides us with an opportunity to improve housing opportunities and community well being for all community members and to build livable, affordable, and housing smart communities. It's hereby resolved that the town of Rochester, in order to meet local housing needs, adopts the following commitments as part of joining the Ulster County Housing Smart Communities Initiative. The commitment includes complete, completing the following six steps. Join the program through adoption of this resolution and begin engaging with the community. Designate Councilwoman Charlotte Smith as Housing Smart Community Coordinator to serve as liaison between Ulster County and the town. Reaffirming the adoption of Resolution 221 of 2022, establishing the Town of Rochester Housing Advisory Committee. Register for participation in the program on the Housing Smart Communities Initiative website. Establish a community outreach and educational campaign on the importance of developing a range of housing options. And begin implementing a prioritized set of the Housing Smart Actions included in the program. I think you should make that resolution. I was going to say, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Um, Christina, I will need a um, certified copy of this resolution. Sure. And I have to send it to the county for that. I was about to ask, I also need one to apply for the Housing Smart Initiative. Okay. Um, email to me and I think I want to have um, resolution 221 of 2022. I need that for the application. Perfect. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. It's been a, a ways getting here, but thank you all for all your work on that. Um, next, Erin has a uh, for the Agricultural Advisory Committee, and I'll let her introduce it. Great. Um, okay. So, I'm going to start with the Did you email this to Mary Lou as well? I did. Okay. Yeah. So this is the same as what I presented at our workshop meeting with the edits. Right. So I'll just read it, and if we want to do any amendments, we can. Okay. Discussion. Um. So the recommended resolution establishment of an agricultural advisory committee, whereas the town board of the town of Rochester recognizes the importance of agriculture and agricultural related enterprises as vital to the town's economic base. And in protecting and preserving the town's rural character through the use and management of the town's natural resources for farming and farming related enterprises and practices. And whereas the town board of the town of, of the town desires to establish an agricultural advisory committee for the town of Rochester to advise the town board. Uh oh, that was a weird, sorry. Um, to advise the town board on issues, whether arising from within the town or outside of the town that impact agriculture and agricultural related enterprises within the town of Rochester and provide recommendations to the town board when appropriate. And whereas the town board of the town of Rochester desires the committee to, in addition to their advisory function, work with the town board, the community and other interested parties to promote agriculture and agricultural related enterprises that are located with the town of Rochester. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Rochester establishes an agricultural advisory committee, here and after referred to as the committee, which shall serve at the pleasure of the town board. And it is further resolved the committee shall consist of the following membership composition. The committee shall be composed of seven members appointed by the town board as follows. Members shall be appointed from residents of the town of Rochester. The town recognizes that an effective agricultural advisory committee is comprised of members from the agricultural community, including but not limited though to those engaged in agriculture or agricultural related enterprises, um, such as from the nursery, crop production, brewery, winery, agritourism, and dairy segments of the industry, those with an interest in small scale agriculture or hobby farming, and those with a background in agriculturally related organizations, industries, or technical 
programs. The town board may, notwithstanding any inconsistent provision of the law, appoint up to two members to the committee for between the ages of 16 and 21. The committee shall designate the chairperson. B, the members appointed to the committee shall serve for a three-year term. Upon initial formation, two members shall serve for a one-year term, two members for a two-year term, and three members for a three-year term. Each year thereafter, reappointments or new appointments will be for three-year terms. Members shall serve without salary. Actually, it should say compensation. Okay. Because it's salary for an employee. Compensation. Resolve the town board of the town of Rochester designates the following as the duties of the committee subject to revision from time to time at the town board's discretion. One, review of proposed land use code changes whenever a proposed local regulation is presented to the town board that may affect agricultural operations or lands within the town of Rochester shall be referred to the committee for review. The committee shall have 30 days to respond with a recommendation for the action. Two, the planning board may refer applications that might impact agricultural operations or lands to the committee for comment. The committee shall have 30 days to respond with a recommendation for the actions. Uh, re three, review land use policies, zoning, and legislation to make recommendations to the town board on how to encourage and preserve agriculture. Four, advise the town board and upon direction from the town board, the Ulster County Agricultural and Farmland Protection Board in relation to the proposed establishment, modification, continuation, or termination of any county agricultural district. The committee shall present objective advice to the town board relating to the desirability of such action, including advice as to the nature of farming and farm resources within any proposed or established area. Five, complete and periodically update an inventory of parcels included within a certified agricultural district or being used for agricultural activities. Six, the committee shall also work with the town board, the Rochester community, and other interested parties to support agriculture and agricultural related enterprises that are located within the town of Rochester. Seven, perform outreach to owners of agricultural parcels for those who are engaged in agricultural activities as defined by the town code to provide information about federal, state, and local agricultural resources. Eight, the committee shall be subject to public officers, uh, chapter 47, article seven, open meetings law. Minutes shall be prepared and filed with the town clerk. Nine, the committee shall meet as determined as as determined necessary, scheduled two weeks in advance, and notice as required by New York State law by the committee, but no less than quarterly. Ten, the committee shall submit to the town board an annual report of activities of the Agricultural Advisory Committee no later than December 31 of each calendar year. And it is further resolved that upon following the clerk and appointment of members by the town board, the committee shall schedule a public meeting within 30 days to establish its rules of procedure and conduct business as deemed appropriate by the committee. You want to make that motion? Yeah. Okay. I'll second. Okay, so motion second. I have a couple just edits that I would like to suggest. On okay. 10, on the, on the why don't we change that to December third or January thirty first? Okay. To give them time at the end of the year, rather than trying to race to do that around the holiday time. Everybody okay with that change? Would we say no later than January thirty first of the following? Of the following calendar year. Yeah, that's that's what the county kind of does on their committee reports. And hey, Mary Lou, can you weigh in on eight the, the open meetings law? I know in the past. Advisory committees didn't necessarily have to follow it. I just want to make sure that we're not going down a bad road here in, in terms of like scheduling meetings and things by making them follow that. So let's look at something quickly. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not trying to hide anything. I just Right, and the thing is, if you say it's subject to the public officer's, you know, law, 
if public officers law doesn't require this to be oh, okay. an open meeting, then you're okay. Okay, fair enough. Right? I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah, Mary Lou's the one that told me to put that in there. Okay. I'm okay with it now that you word it that way, Mary Lou. That that actually makes me think a bit differently. So okay. Never mind. Um, anybody else have any questions or amendments or changes other than the yeah, the amendments you made yeah. going on? So uh, so then uh you want to just restate the motion as, as amended? Yeah. Anything comments? It's fine though. So once you once you tweak the language, yeah, email that to, to get it to Chrissy or Kate yeah. so they insert it rather than have to type it all. Yes. Do you second it? I'm going to yes. yes. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now, quick question: Do you want me to advertise for this now? Do you want to give it a little while? I think we should have already gotten people. Emailing me saying they are I was I don't think I'll take out a paid ad okay. on this one. I'll do it on the website. And then if I could circulate that to my news for yeah. I have an email yeah. list okay. that I'd like to circulate it Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. I know you've been working on this Yeah, that is Great. it's been an ongoing thing. So. Um okay, moving to appointments. I have made them all individual just the ease because there are different dates of terms of office and everything, but I'm hoping we can move through these pretty quickly. So, appointment to the Environmental Conservation Commission. Town of Rochester Town Board reappoints John Messerschmidt to serve as a member of the Environmental Conservation Commission for a term ending December 31, 2025, and requests the town clerk advise the I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Historic Preservation Commission, Town of Rochester Town Board reappoints Joan Ewing to serve as a member of the Historic Preservation Commission for a term ending December 31, 2025, and requests the town clerk advise the oath of office. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Town of Rochester Town Board reappoints Shirley Avery to serve as a member of the Historic Preservation Commission for a term ending December 31, 2025. And request the town clerk advise of the oath of office. I'll make that motion. A second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Aye. And one opposed. So, um, appointment to the planning board. Town of Rochester Town Board reappoints Patrick Williams to serve as a member of the. Ooh. What, boy, did I poach Richard that word? Close. It's just an extra mm -hmm. M in there. Mm -hmm. Of the planning board for a term ending December 31, 2029, and request the town clerk advise of the oath of office required. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, town of Rochester Town Board reappoints Anne Marie Maloney to serve as alternate member of the planning board for a term ending December 31, 2024. And request the town clerk advise of the oath of office. I'll make that motion. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? I think it's not like an O. No. No. Nope. An O? No. No. Nope. Nope. It is an MO. Mm -hmm. That yeah, is, because yeah. her, she's always been known as MO, A M M O. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. My, <laughs> I wrong. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. That's Anne okay. Marie. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It took me a long time. I was questioning myself because she said it's MO, which is how I knew her in, right, right. in, in yeah. college. Yeah. So, um, Town of Rochester Town Board reappoints Harley Davis to serve as a member that's, of the. That's zone. an appointment. Oh, yeah, that's not a reappoint. That's uh, appoints. Appoints Harley Davis to serve as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term ending December 31, 2027. To request the town clerk advise the oath of office required. Make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Town of Rochester Town Board reappoints Adam Paddock to serve as a member of the Board of Ethics for a term ending December 31, 2026, and request the town court provides the oath of office requirement. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Wait, I have a question. Yeah. 
Adams our board representative on that, so should it only be so we have to Nope. This so oh, he can stay on. Okay, he can stay on. Yeah. Question. So he's not our board. We have to have one employee or elected official on it by law, mm -hmm. and he is that person. Um, we should have appointed him last year. We didn't, but it's the he. That's the seat that he's in. Okay, so if he doesn't, if he's not starting the last just be appointed. Else. Or have he can stay on the board, and so you know we'll have to gotcha. figure that out yeah. when it. Comes. I just wanted to make sure. Like, no, right. That yeah. is the term that he's his seat filled because okay. it expired in 2022, and it's a three, four, five. It's a four-year term. Gotcha. Oh no, it's a five-year term. Okay, no, I'm questioning. That is correct. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it is correct. Okay. Did I get a motion? Yeah, I just need a vote. Sorry, I said that. Nope. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Stephen Roberts to serve as a member of the Board of Ethics for a term ending December 31, 2027. Request the town clerk advise of the oath of office. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Now moving to our senior and youth recreation. This is the first time we're appointing people to membership that with the, the new yeah. division. Yeah. So I, I just sort of work backwards. So the Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Deborah Martin to serve as a member of the Senior and Youth Recreation Commission for a term ending December 31, 2028. Request the town court to provide the oath of office required. Make that motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Pam Stocking to serve as a member of the Senior Youth Recreation Commission for a term ending December 31, 2027, and requests the town clerk advise of the oath of office required. I'll make that motion. All, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Sandy Chipman to serve as a member of the Senior Youth Recreation Commission for a term ending December 31, 2026. The request the town clerk advise of the oath of office required. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Marjorie Bogart to serve as a member of the Senior Youth Recreation Commission for a term ending December 31, 2025. Request the town clerk advise of the oath of office. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next. Um, I can insert names as we go. I, I left it left them blank because uh, we had briefly discussed it, but we had come to 100%. Uh, uh, I, I wasn't sure if we'd come to 100% consensus. So. Town of Rochester Town Board appoint and for the public we're setting two ambulance district committees. There's the Rochester Ambulance District Committee, which will be the contract with Turnhouse and Accord First Aid. There's the High Falls Ambulance District, which is the Marble Town First Aid. We're appointing two committees, but we will be appointing some members on both committees. So the Town of Rot uh, Resolution W, the Town of Rochester Town Board appoints David Bowen to serve as a member of the Rochester Ambulance okay. District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2025. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay, Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Bruce Saris to serve as a member of the Rochester Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2021. I'll make that. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Uh, resolution Y, the Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Michael Mioli to serve as a member of the Rochester Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for term ending December 31, 2024. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Um, Resolution Z, the Town of Rochester Town Board appoints B. Haugen DePue to serve as a member of the Rochester Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2023. I'll make that motion. A second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. 
And finally, uh, the Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Joe Biddy to serve as a member of the Rochester Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2023. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Um, next, appointment to the High Falls Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee. The Town of Rochester Town Board appoints David Boland to serve as a member of the High Falls Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2025. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Bruce Saris to serve as a member of the High Falls Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2024. I'll make that motion. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Michael Mioli to serve as a member of the High Falls Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2024. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Town of Rochester Town Board appoints D. Haugen DePue to serve as a member of the High Falls Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2023. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Town of Rochester Town Board appoints Charles Nurko to serve as a member of the High Falls Ambulance District Budget Advisory Committee for a term ending December 31, 2023. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. I do want to say we had another person who interviewed who uh, the reasoning that we did not appoint that person is uh, that that person works for an ambulance staffing agency and we thought there might be a potential conflict of interest. Um, I will contact that person and let them know why we did not appoint that is a uh, concern that there may be a conflict in, in duties. So that is the reason. Uh, we thank the people that applied. Um, and Mary Lou, do they need to be sworn in for this? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Christina, if you would uh, just let Kate know that we need to let the people know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you. Um, moving on to discussion. Um, we will start with the ambulance district contracts. Um, I did circulate to you guys by email the changes. And there's the other one. So um, rather than going through it every section, um, I did make the changes we talked about. I made the ch some changes that Mary Lou had recommended. I know, Michael, you had possibly some different language to insert in both, where there was one section that we used the same language in both contracts. Um, in the KFAS contract, it is item number, uh, trying to find it here, uh, item number 10. That was the one that I thought I saw in an email chain. We should change the language on that. But if you. No, you're talking about the. the the CAD report, right? Yes, that's item number 10 on page three. Maybe. Yeah, I, so I think there were some concerns about whether or not that report would get into any kind of uh, personally identifiable information. So, um, you know, when I when I spoke to Mr. Biddy, the, the spirit of, of this is we just want to have a, a mechanism for People that are advising into the town board to kind of get an understanding of, of what the numbers are, what the responses look like, right? so that we can kind of plan preemptively about how we ensure that coverage is being provided. So I think 
Um, one suggestion, and obviously I don't want to just keep folks quiet separately, but one suggestion he had was, you know, maybe there's an, an opportunity for a board member to go review that directly to look at a redacted one, but to have a requirement of some kind of continuous reporting uh, of that document might be a, a challenge because of HIPAA regulations. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm open to. Well, instead of calling it a CAD report, which is a very specific report, is there just a different nomenclature we can put in there? Shall provide a, a report of. We could say all, all. We could say a summary report of county data. Yeah. Um, related to. Okay. okay. So instead of saying computer aided dispatch report, we will say shall provide a summary. Report of county, did it say county data or county response data? County response metrics. County response metrics. Okay. Data. Do you like data though? I do. Data. Okay. For the previous quarter. So is that is that acceptable? And, and we'll use that same language in, in both contracts? I think that, yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. So in the other one, it's in section. That is. going to be in the obligations of, of MFAU. Maybe I didn't put it in. Maybe it was in 3.7. I know it's 7.7. Oh, and that's yes. There it is. 7.3. Oh, yeah. Got it. So instead of the. Okay, so not to keep jumping back and forth, but other than those two changes, um, you know, this, I had emailed this a while ago, so I don't know if you have, have had any changes of heart. Mary Lou, have you had a chance to review the, the new updated ones? Muted. You're, you're, you're muted. <laughs> Hadn't we... Um... We basically, I made the changes. That I was going to say, right. And you sent me those changes after. It's nothing since then, right? No. Other than no, those, yes. Just yeah, I, right yes, I reviewed those. Okay. And you don't have any other concerns? Nope, I'm good. Because okay. a couple of them, we had similar language in both. And what I right. did is I just sort of made it be one generic statement and put the same statement in both contracts. So, so does anybody else have any other questions, concerns. I did send a courtesy copy uh, to both squads. Um, the KFAS one uh, was returned back, uh, or not returned back, but returned email that um, stated that their attorney was uh, no longer uh, representing them. And uh, <coughs> but I think- He did copy that to the, the current president though, I yes, believe. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, and, um, the only change we heard back from Marble Town was the change we just made. Yeah. So what I would recommend, seeing as we haven't heard back from KFAS, on the Rochester district, if you're ready to approve these tonight, and on both of them, I would approve them subject to the approval and signature of whichever, you know, Marble yeah. Town and KFAS. What we did last time is we just approved my signing these and offering them to them. And then they, you know, if they want to offer back an amendment, they can, or they can sign it and return it. That's how we did it last time. Yeah, I mean, that's the same thing, basically. <laughs> so, so the resolution I'm going to ask if we can combine them into both, into one resolution, uh, authorizing the supervisor to sign the uh, draft agreement 
agreements for the Marble Town First Aid Unit. Uh, I'm sorry for the High Falls. Oh, right there. It shouldn't say High Falls area on the top. Nope. Another change we should make. <laughs> it should say in the uh, High Falls Ambulance District. of the town of Rochester. So I'm gonna ask for a motion to authorize the supervisor to sign uh, the contract agreements for uh, the Marbletown First Aid Unit for service in the High Falls Ambulance District of the town of Rochester and for the Kerhoxen Accord First Aid Squad for services in the Rochester Ambulance District and to forward the respective contracts to those agencies for signature or offer of any changes. I'll make that motion. Any discussion? Yeah, I just, I, uh, the one thing I wanna highlight, which I know we've said a bunch of times, is, um, first and foremost, we, we value the contributions that volunteers and squads uh, make to the town to be one set of things. Hopefully, these contracts are viewed in that spirit. You know, the, the priority, at least from my perspective, is the, the health, safety, and well being of residents, of volunteers, and anybody else who's providing medical services to the community. Um, I feel, speaking for myself, that we want this to be a partnership. So um, these contracts are for this year. If, they're not working or something's not working. Part of why we wanted to establish this tax advisory board was to, to help us um, manage this relationship. I, I see a lot of discussions happening, social media, things like that. I, I think it's important for residents to understand um, that the, the squads are not part of the town infrastructure. They're separate entities. They have their own budgets. They have their own uh, ways of doing business. They provide incredible service in town. So what we're trying to do is, is essentially have a conversation between these separate entities and the town board to make sure that collectively we can provide services. And so I thank both, both squads for, for what they're doing. Hopefully uh, we can get through any uh, remaining contract discussions we have. Um, we look forward to working with you this year. Thank you. I think you said it very well. Um, the one thing that just sort of emphasizes uh, the squads are, are vendors to the to the town board. Uh, it is not meant to diminish anything they do, uh, but they are essentially we are hiring them to do this service, and and we definitely do thank them for all they do and have done for all the years that they've done it. Um, and I think. Us being able to get them better funding is, is going to be a huge improvement for them. Uh, they've done it for both squads, did it for a long time on donations and what little they could get back to insurance companies, which is not much because insurance billing is a nightmare. I, I, one thing I've really learned out of this is how badly and how how badly the system works for insurance billing. It is all in the insurance company's favor. And uh, I think you guys will agree on that. So um, we thank them for all they do. Uh, we will try to make this work for this year and we will make improvements as we go. And uh, we look forward to a successful year and a good partnership between this advisory committee and the various boards of the two uh, ambulance uh, districts. And uh, let us know if you need anything. Thank you. Thank you. Um, We'll get these done and get them out to you guys tomorrow uh, for signature. And then we can get our first payment. Uh, if we get them back by the end of, by before next week, we can get our first payment out by, by the February 16th. Well, I know KFEP is going to have an executive board meeting tomorrow, so we'll discuss okay. that then. Um, you know what I can do is like, if there's somebody <coughs> at the at the squad when I when tomorrow when I get them done I'll drop it off there at the squad in an envelope for you. Well, there there is a, a mailbox outside. Door. Oh, 
Perfect. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. You got it. You want to leave? Yep. I can do that. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that reminder. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Sorry about that. Can I share a quick story then? I'd like to share. Yeah, uh, the board. One, one thing we had, we. Go ahead. Yeah, you're good. Thank you. Well, one thing we had, we had an issue with was one ambulance would work, you know, number one spare, one, one crank. And we also had an issue with the radios would work. So we scrambled. My brother came down, the mechanic, and did the radio. And then uh, our radio guy from Compton area, I didn't have his number, so we reached around and, and we got him to come down and he fixed our radio and they pulled us. That was a win. He and and he got us up. They both got us up and going at night. Yeah. I'd like to thank Dave. You're welcome. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank very you. Much. No problem. Thank you. Appreciate your patience hanging hanging with us for a couple hours here. Well, so. everybody have a good evening. You too. You too. The next item is for discussion of the uh, the volunteer. Ambulance and Fire Company tax reduction that New York State adopted as of December 8th. Um, I have been talking with our assessor quite a bit about this. Um, there's a lot of questions how it actually applies. And uh, well, there's the two pages that I was looking for that didn't print. Oh well. Um, so here's here's the way it stands, uh, and um, and Mary Lou, I don't know if you've had done a chance to do any research. Oh, that's no, that's. So in December, the state has had this law for a while in a different format. Um, in December, it was signed into effect by the governor. What it allows is a 10% reduction on the value of property for EMS and volunteer fire uh, people of, of their property so they can have a 10% reduction in the value of their property with a couple stipulations. One is they must live in the town of the district they serve. So you can't, or a district that serves the town. Um, so, in our case, that is Perhonson Accord and Marbletown, and also Ellenville First Aid, who does parts of Yeagerville. In terms of fire district, it would be Perhonson Fire District and Accord Fire District, because we have two properties in Perhonson Fire District in our town. So, the way I read it is if somebody was a member of Perhonson Fire District and lived in our town, because we have two properties in our town, they would they would apply or couldn't apply. They must the property must be 100% a residential property. If it's partial residential, partial business or commercial, it is then um, prorated based on uh, uh, the proportions of the use, and that is set by the assessor. The part that we have to pick this you must be a a member or two to five years, we get to set in our local law what we decide that year should be. Um, some towns, most towns that I've seen have set it at the two years. I will tell you when I talked to one of the fire commissioners, he said, well, I would, I, I would accept it at five years. I think my guess is somewhere in the middle of the two is probably more the right answer. Um, the, the, Agency then supplies to our assessor a list of their members, and then our assessor, people have to fill out the application. Bear in mind that March 1st is the taxable valuation. We would have to adopt a local law, get it filed, get it certified by the state of New York, and then collect all the assessment between now and March 1st, which is less than a month. A couple towns have adopted these in January, and they're moving forward with it happening now. I, I would propose that rather than rushing this and putting a lot more work on our assessor and possibly making mistakes, 
that we move this forward through the process, but that it would take effect as well. I just don't see it physically happening for this March, given that it was only adopted in December. The counties is also, their public hearing is March 14th, so clearly they're not gonna have one adopted by March 1st. Um, I know a couple other towns had good intentions of trying to get it done. Marbletown, for example, was gonna adopt theirs next week. They've kind of backed off on trying to do it for the March 1st deadline. Because until it's actually filed and certified by the state, which is usually about a week after you adopt it, it doesn't take effect. And that leaves people a week. I just, it's just not enough. Yeah, I think that us adopting it, sort of doing it, and doing certain values. And all that is bearing with the idea that we want to adopt it, which I, I, I don't want to make it. You said trying to put the increase so that there's all of those exemption changes are kind of for the next year for that. Well, Our the seniors are this year. Yeah. No, weren't the changes for? No, we adopted those. They, uh, they, no, take, they took effect this year. Oh, okay. but that was my fault. Uh, my confusion. Um, they they take effect on the assessment this year. This year. So which means it will, will be the school taxes that it will first. That's what pop I up on if the district does it. Yeah, you know. the district has not done it, so I. Okay, it so that. so for the seniors that you adopted this year, they'll first see it on their town tax bill next year. Twenty twenty four. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, because it's the taxable valuation date is July first. Yes. Yeah. So the yeah. July first, twenty twenty three. So this, if we were to do this, it would take effect on July first, twenty twenty four. It would be on the twenty twenty five bill. Right. If you if you wait oh, till now, yeah. you know, I'm talking like I'm somewhat assuming that we want to do. Uh, I, let me I'm backtrack, but I think it's a very good thing. The other thing people need to be aware of, and the assessor brought it to me. Anybody who takes the there is an IRS income tax deduction that you can also take as a volunteer firefighter. If you and on the back of the form to fill out for this from New York State, it clearly states cannot take you back and be booked. So you have to you would have to decide which taxation works better for you. Now bear in mind a 10% reduction in valuation for many people is only going to be twenty or thirty thousand dollars, which is about ten or fifteen dollars decrease in their taxes. Whereas the IRS reduction is, a, is I believe I'm not a tax expert, but I believe it's a straight deduction off your taxes due, or I don't know if it's bad if it's off your income. I don't want to say, do you know, David? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's off your, off, your, off your income, not off your, I think it's a reduction of your income. Is it an exemption or a deduction? That's the question. <laughs> On your federal taxes, on your taxes. You get a $200 tax. It's $200. Okay. So you do get a money. credit. I just did my taxes. Okay. So it is a direct credit, not. Which not is worth tax more tax than. Pay, which is worth more than the $10 or $15 that you're going to get for this. But you can only take one. You can only take one or the other. Now, if the, if the school district chooses to do this, then that's another story. But what I did ask the assessor, and he's not sure because this is new. If you can apply for the reduction on town taxes or, or not apply on town taxes, but apply for the school district, and he doesn't believe you can do that. When you apply for an exemption through the assessor's office, it's one exemption, and then they go through everybody who offers that exemption. So if the school ever decides to do it, or even the county doing it, that's a sizable tax reduction. Too. So then people would have to decide which is worth more to them, $200 off their income taxes or property tax reduction. Well, the county already has this in place. Uh, correct? Not yet. Not yet. They have, oh, a, ver exactly. they, I see it. They have a version of it. This is the local law it's number one that is public for public hearing, hearing March 14th. Okay. I provided both of these because the, the example that I did for Rochester was based on the one that Marbletown did. But in looking at the counties, I'll be honest, I like their language a little bit better. It came out after the fact. Um, so if you guys want to move this forward, 
I'll bring this to our March meeting. You guys can look at these two and decide which one you like better in terms of the language. And Mary Lou, maybe you can as well. Obviously, the county will need to be tweaked to make it be for Rochester. Right. And Mike, on the last page of the one you've given us um, as local law X of 2023, change Marvel yeah. Town to Rochester. Oh, did I miss one? Yeah, you missed one. I got. I thought I got them all. They're going to have to do that search and replace. Oh yeah, instead. under the under the yeah under the yeah for the filing. Yep. This one. So you know what we're going to do ahead. I know. Um, I think that we should look into it. Um, especially if the county's already setting a public hearing and potentially adopting this. Um, because the county combined with our taxes might be worth it, depending on the value of some people's evaluation of their houses. And, and I'm. I think it would encourage people to get out and volunteer a little more knowing that there's a credit in that sense they didn't know about it's a more and that is the purpose of this marketing full example of how they could benefit from becoming a volunteer because i'm sure a lot of the most people doing their income tax unless you're a cpa you don't know all of the tax breaks you can get so some people may not even realize it's actually there on the form and just it, it, it clearly states you know are you a volunteer firefighter you check yes and it just it, it tells you to take that 200 dollars deduction yeah, but, so, so I think that it was beneficial and also, you know, hopefully the school would get a look down. Well, I also it. think if the towns, you know, Marble Town is moving forward with it, almost every town I know is moving forward with this in one form or another. <laughs> um, what is the board's feel on the two to five? We don't have to answer right now. We want to consider it. Um, I think I three think popped into my head yeah, I because it was, three also, just, but other people are doing too, so. I don't know that we have to be different. No, I think we agree with their amount. With um, I mean, look, the the value that the town is getting out of somebody who volunteers for two years, there's so, a you know the, the costs, the, the taxes that are, are spread out on the total taxable population. I mean. If we make it to, I'm fine with making. It. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with making it to be based off the one prior to the I, I wouldn't care. I would okay. Care either way, if we went to three, but I'm fine okay. with two. I would be fine with two also. Yeah. Well, if you guys can look through these and just think about it, and maybe next at next Thursday's meeting, I put it briefly on for discussion, and you can just mm -hmm. tell me if there's one version you prefer over the other. Um, they're basically the same resolution, the same local law. It, it, mm -hmm. It's it's just boilerplate taken out of the state. Uh, I just when I saw the county, I was like, oh, that's a, that's a little a little clearer than the than the other ones. So. Yeah, and I, and I I spoke to Steve Nelson. He brought this to my attention as well, and uh, I said, great idea. I said the same thing I do. It's probably going to be tough to get it in this year, but you know, we'll obviously look at it. Uh, and, you know, I think he understands. He just wanted to make sure that we were aware that it was out there. Um, I, I know you said it a bunch of times, but the one, the other thing I emphasized to him was you also have to talk to the schools because that's where that's where the whole well. Is, yeah. What I was going to say is, if if all the towns adopt it, you know, I I have gone to school board meetings and I will go to the school board meeting and talk as the supervisor. And say, please consider adopting this because the seniors tax, they they were way behind what everybody else was, and they did improve it, but then the state went even higher and they they they, they went up to where they could have gone up to before, but they could have gone even further. And, and you know, they kind of about five years behind those times in getting it done or more. Do we know if Rosendale's looking at it? I'm sure Rose I can tell you what Rosendale's doing. Rosendale um, last night said their public hearing for their meeting next Wednesday, um, but that's not enough days for it to have been on on the desks of the town board members. So they're having a public hearing next Wednesday. They're having a special meeting next Friday at five o'clock because everyone was available just for the purpose of passing it. Okay, thank so you. And, so to they're going to get they'll research? get it done this year. They'll get it done this year, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I think probably put a little pressure well, on do we, to adopt the report. Well, but so what they're doing is it's getting it done so it appears on the 2024 tax bill. Right. I, I don't feel like it's fair to our assessor 
and his staff to, to do that to them. Because if we were to if, if we were to agree to this tonight, even if we were to uh, uh, set one of these for public hearing next week, even then if we adopt it on the night, it would get filed on the tenth. It wouldn't be approved by the state until probably at earliest the seventeenth. That gives them what eight days, nine days to, to take in exemptions and get them properly vetted and filed. I just I mean without without the school, I don't think we're gonna break two hundred. Yeah, 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 yeah right. you're not gonna break what you get. I would agree with that. that. Yeah. So, so I, I don't feel the sense of urgency to get it done for the twenty twenty four tax year. I just don't. And the county too, because the county's a the, the town and the county combined might be enough that it is worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Because the county is about what did, what did we say about fourteen percent of your taxes? Yeah. So whereas we're about three percent of your taxes. So. Yeah, so I mean hopefully hopefully they can get the school on board with it because that would definitely Okay. I'd be curious to know what the based off the average assessed value is what that number is like. If you have like a four hundred thousand dollar home, well, I can tell you. So the average average residential property in the town is about is, is approximately two forty to two fifty. Now, bear in mind that's not with the equalization rate included. So, um, because for the county, it would be based off the equal. I, I think it would oh, be so based off the equalizer. So the county, because your tax rate. Oh no, your tax rate per thousand. Is calculated off the equalized rate, but then it's based on your assessed value in the world. So never mind. I mean, I, so in most places, a ten percent reduction of just even say if it's two fifty, which is not quite it's two forty something, twenty five thousand dollars. The town taxes, I don't have the rates in front of me, but the town taxes are about five dollars per thousand. So uh, that's one hundred and twenty five dollars. The county is probably about three times that. So it's probably about five hundred dollars. But the county's not gonna get it done. Not March fourteenth, they're gonna they'll no they'll hold the public hearing March fourteenth. They won't adopt it until April. And then it's gotta be filed. So I think we work it. It's a great idea. Okay. Okay. Um Moving on to the next item. Um, well, if you don't mind, I was going to interject a couple of the, uh, this paint thing that came in. Um, this was just a, a kind of an FYI thing that is an email that came in from the UCRA. They're paint recycling events. So the RA has been in touch with a company called Green Sheen. They conduct one day collection events. Um, so what I want to do is share this with you and I, Karen, it was more about sharing it with you to see if um, we have any questions about it. Uh, to just say, is this something we want to pursue? I think it's not a bad idea. I think we should. Um, but I didn't know if, you know, I wanted to share it with you guys to see if you had any specific questions you wanted me to ask about the program. Um, so, more or less, I just have to reach back out to the RRA and say, yes, we're interested. Yeah. Or no, yeah. we're not. Is it on late time? Uh, I think it is because I, but I don't know. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. I don't know. Probably not staying, but well, it's, I'm sure. Well, they don't take the UCRA can't take it. right. But this company, yeah. what they're doing is contracting with this company, or not contracting, but you working with this company independently. Um, so we would be, I guess, for doing a contract with this company for a one day event or, or a, you know, a couple times a year event. So it depends on the facility. The one um, they all take different. One of them only does. They don't have the New York one on the website, but some of saying them, this organization. This organization like takes more Google's than they can. But I think it depends on the facility. 
So one state they only take their tax, another they have oil, um, varnishes, bunkers, coolers. So I think it would depend. We'd have to get the details. Yeah, so it's hard to figure out. I mean, the county does it for elections. They just can't do it. Yeah, they I mean, have the one the events. So for yeah. Uh, yeah. and they just started taking it. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's good to have other options. Do they only take pavements drive? Because they used to only take no, they, 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 This event, they, they have this one off Oh, the, the one off event. Where you can bring it. Okay, well, the hazardous. The hazardous. Yeah, what? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted I to share that with you to get feedback of, of what you guys thought about it. So. Um, next, uh, this was a request. And I just, I want to know if you would like me to look into it. So our constables currently purchase their own body armor, um, which they wear when they're in the line of duty with us. Many of them also are with other agencies. They utilize that same body armor with those other agencies. Um, one of the constables brought it to me the other day in, with the idea of, it's very expensive for them because they're buying it at retail commercial rates. Um, we could purchase them for them through state bid. I have not explored state bid, but I guarantee you there's got to be a state bid out for these. There's no way there's not a state bid for this type of. <laughs> um, I think it's for body armor. I think we should investigate. Yeah, and I, and I also, you know, I want to find out our liability if we're buying them, but I also, I'm sure they come with some sort of, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, Rich also texted me about yeah. um, the agenda item. Um, he said he normally applies for the grant to get them. Right. And he does in the order. Yes, so but I rather than applying, this would be that us purchasing them through state bid and instead of applying for a grant. You know, um, the grant is subjected to us getting it or not. So, he said that he normally, um, he's always, he's always said he normally takes care of the best and of the goal to best part to the goal bulletproof best partnership grant. And we get that grant almost every time apply for it. I'll, I'll talk to him offline then about it because I, I, I'd rather have a we pay our constables a pretty low fee, and I think this is something we could, do, we could offer them as a way of not spending their own money because I'm told it's twice as much retail as it is. Um, yeah, I think we could talk to Rich because there's a grant for it. We should obviously take advantage of that because that's how much we normally spend. Yeah, so we could that. Well, I don't know because we haven't been, the town has not been involved in. in We've we've offered we, we've given approval to apply for, but I I didn't know whether we were getting them or not. I've never received any information back that we have actually got them. Well, that's an email because it just needs to be allocated to get to our expiration dates on them. Right, and we probably haven't done it for a few years. Then. Well, this guess, this know. this particular constable purchasing his own, and that's why he approached. Me. Not true. Really I I don't I don't I could be wrong. I don't believe we've been supplying them to the to the okay. Well, in any case, it sounds like we need to do further investigation. Absolutely. I just wanted and, to find out if yeah. we want to consider think, the, the before before I went down that road. I want feedback. Yeah, I think we should definitely consider it. We should see costs, and then we should because what he also says there are grants we can get. So, however, we can cover. It, and it's doing it under officially through the town board makes it easier than I think we should do that. Okay. That's definitely important equipment though for them. I'm not a political or anything. Yeah, that's sounds good. Okay. Um, Michael, do you want to quickly deal with before we get into the RFP? Uh, do you want to uh, address the uh, charter spectrum? I, yeah, I just. I want consensus from the board that I can I can say, hey, if, if the numbers double, we're gonna explore other options. Because I, I think that's what he's waiting on right now. Is, uh, we want to 
pay this new price. And what's gotten worse is now I'm, you know, I love maps, but now I'm getting maps that are showing like actual house locations compared to properties and saying, this one's really far, this might be additional money for this, and which of these do you want to do? And I just feel like we're in this weird dance. Can we say, not say we're exploring other options because that sounds very much, we don't want to talk to you, but just say at that, at that cost, the board needs to consider it. Yeah. Okay. Rather than say we're exploring other options. I just don't want I don't want to be that sort of adversarial. Yeah. But then I think you can say that we should wait to hear back. Yeah. Yeah. If he wants to I'm okay with that. In the meantime. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Um, but because the price has been all over. And I still don't know if we have a solid but Okay, I'm fine with that, but but yeah, I'd rather not say it's more options. That sounds a little too antagonistic. Yeah. Well, but also, I will say this, Michael. Welcome to my world for the last five years. Yeah. You know, five years I've been dealing with these people, and you you have gotten further than any of us ever have. So I will give you that. One step forward. Oh, I use I use my share of vinegar too, but it's a different person that one. It's not the person that one. So the other person just with the radio silent. I mean, well, let me, let me, so let me ask this other thing. I mean, we can just you know forward this correspondence to the public service commission. This is how I I got my personal connection. Uh, I got movement on that, and just say like, hey, we're we're trying to negotiate with them, but it seems like it's kind of all over. We don't have to decide that now, but that's another option. Part of me to wants this. to see where the county, because there's now more activity going in other areas than there was a few years ago. You want me to at least update March on where things are Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let her know where we stand with it because she's working the state to maybe just, you know, get the rules to change. Okay. And that may be a game changer. So I think that's the answer. Yeah. Like I said, and we didn't we didn't have that. Ask me. Yeah. The, put it this way, the Public Service Commission is not real thrilled with the fact of that gap. Yeah. I mean they've given them every leeway that they could. Unfortunately, they they haven't been strong enough to just say no. But I think we're we're this close to it being declared a public utility. I think yeah. we're almost at that. You know, to the football analogy, I think we're at the five yard line. <laughs> Maybe the ten. I hope so. Lynn Orchard and I were up there arguing with them years ago. Yeah. I think she's got it now. They connected to the hole. Oh, she's got it. No, yeah. but as a, uh, as a oh, yeah. No, as a town board member. Oh, as a That's how long ago we're talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was a town board. And then after she um, got on the legislature for the first time, we did that. She was on for two terms. So. Okay. Now moving to the RFP. Um, Made the changes we discussed at the last meeting. Um, Mary Lou, I apologize. I emailed this to you. Yeah. These were extras. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You gave Adam one. Yeah. Some I made sick copies, some I own. Um, I made the changes we talked about at the last meeting. I took out the sections that Mary Lou said didn't need to be in there. Um, I changed the bidding structure a little bit or the, the proposal structure with the percentages. I didn't include, we talked about including the pricing in this first step. And I just didn't, I, the more I looked at it, I'm not quite sure because it's a two step process. So the first step is just deciding who we think is qualified based on their proposals. And then we would interview as many as we chose to. 
uh, for the second step. And my gut feeling is I would rather not eliminate somebody in the step one if we're going to do a step two with price. Normally, we like in the RFP we did for the uh, building conditions, we did it on price and end proposal. And then we, we interviewed the top five and we narrowed it down from there. I don't necessarily, in the because we're dealing with something that's not quite as tangible, I would rather us not worry about price at the beginning is let's, let's pick the best companies that we think are out there and then let them tell us what they think it's going to cost in their face. Yeah. That's my opinion. Um, but we still would use this, the scale of the structure of the quality of the proposal to decide who makes it to the second round. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it's fine. We just need to change. It says technically and financially qualified. I'm not going to say technically qualified proposal. Yeah, where's where is that? Uh, in step one, it's the last sentence. Okay, there's two, step one, two, four, so like one or more technically income. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you just told me and I'm on step, the same day. Step, step one. one. Oh, I'm looking at step. Oh, so we're just going to remove the end value. Okay. Um, we would need to set a date when we want these to be back by. I think we should do this. Uh, I think we should at least, it should be at least a month. I think probably a little bit more. I would rather have Get, give people time to do a really good proposal. And I think in this case, this isn't going to be like we're looking for a local carpenter like we were with the, the, the um, court bathroom. In this, we could potentially have a consultant out of state. What? Not yet, but it's due, it's due next Wednesday. You better. I personally <laughs> sent them to the people that did before. So so my question is, do we want to do this as, I don't know, March? Figure out when we want to review it. So we have a meeting on March 9th. Do we want to do it for March 8th? Is that enough time? Do we want to do it for the April meeting to discuss it? I mean, if we get them on the 8th, I wouldn't be ready to talk about it. I wouldn't either. No. And I wouldn't want to do it sooner than that because that's not really how do we say to have them by the attempt to talk about them on the audit, the, the audit meeting? On we, the could. we could. And then we could have a meeting. We could, or we could schedule a special meeting just for the purpose of reviewing. I wouldn't want it to do the March 8th. Uh, then the no, question is, do we do it the March 17th then? Uh, you know, mid-March. Mid and that gives everybody... Uh, the 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 workshop or the audit meeting would be on the thirtieth. That would give everybody. They came to us by the seventeenth. You in reality would get them on the on the Monday twentieth. That even that's not much time. Wait, are our audit meetings on the audit meetings are the last 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 Thursday? Not other. Okay. I was ready to fly in March in March, so I was like, wait, do I write this one? Um. So what do people think? Is March 15th too soon? Is it not? Is it I think the 7th, 28th. Too soon for the responses or too soon to talk back? No, for the responses. Too. Or the 15th or the 16th. We could have it the 15th and then in theory you could have it by that weekend. One of that weekend. We could give you two weekends to look at the stuff. I mean, that's almost 16 or 16 for people to respond. Yeah. And then I mean, like bear in mind that these weeks. really are not going to be out there. They're not going to be out there. I mean, I, can't, I think that the does everyone think they would want two weekends to review? I have no idea what my life is. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I know you don't know what your place is like. Well, I was at last April. April. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. What's that saying? Like, what's that saying? Oh, from here, we can hear. Well, 
Yeah, do whatever you guys want. I I think that I think the week of the fifteenth would or even actually you I I think the week of the twenty second if we're talking about the, about the audit meeting would be fine for the weekend. Them well, if that's the case, then we'll say the 17th of that Friday, and then yeah, you'll get them yeah. on the Monday. You okay. wouldn't have that weekend, but you would have that's that whole week, a weekend, the and then three Wednesday. days. Yeah, I think that, that would give you fun. like uh, 10 days. Yeah, I think that's about what we had for the website. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a little, this is a little more in depth. I was going to say, this is like work, a little more in depth about actual services, but I don't think it'll be. Plus, in order to make a proposal, some of these clients, some of these potential, may want to come actually do a site visit and look at the buildings. Oh, I didn't even think of that. We're not requiring them to. I, I didn't include that in there, but I can imagine that some of them do their proposal that they have some things like this. Well, for, and that could be the part of the second phase. That, sure. When you actually have to do the site visit. Sure. This is more just a proposal of. Your method. Okay. Your method. Okay. Sir. So I do have. Um, I'm sorry. Well, it says, no, but not limit to physical assessment. Yeah. Sorry. That um, the financially qualified thing that you took out, it didn't mm -hmm. refer to the cost. It referred to the financial capacity oh. of okay. the firm, which and we have we, a whole section on how financial capacity. Okay. Oh, like the size of the firm. Yeah. 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 So we'll leave that in. But I was wondering, do we need to say somewhere in step two that we will be evaluating costs somewhere? Because it doesn't say that anywhere. Do we need Possibly. To? Step two evaluation criteria. It is a detailed scope of work along with other necessary information will be provided. I don't know. Yeah, we'll, let me just find our step two criteria. It's we don't have any. We don't have any. <laughs> oh, so it's going to be set forth in the step two RFP document. So okay. we'll be set. So when we invite them for the step two, we'll be drafting the okay. document. And they get to ask questions if anyone wants to talk about that. Okay. All right. This is more just the, uh, are you interested and tell us about your firm and yeah. do you think your firm would do the job? That's why I didn't want to get into specific price yet. That was my okay. So in that case, I think we probably can do it. So we'll say March 17th. Yeah. Chrissy, yeah. is there any issue that you can think of with that date for you guys in your office? Lunch. Should I send it March 16th? I'll do it in Thursday. Yeah, March I, yeah. Yeah. Do the 16th. We'll send it in March 16th. So, so, up, so on page three, where there's the the Blank space, and then again on page. Um, uh, where's the other spot? <laughs> oh, on page two. I went the wrong Okay, so if if nobody has any more issues, then I would ask to authorize the supervisor to. to uh, advertise the request for proposals for physical site security consulting services as amended and to post it on the New York State contract report. All of I'll second. Any questions or discussion on that? Okay. Um, a question for me. I don't think this is something advertising in the paper is going to be a good thing. Would you guys agree with that? Unless we did something like, I'll be honest, like an Albany paper. I don't think a local, the Freeman, it's not going to, there's not going to be a, a cost return for that, in my opinion. Yeah. No. So we'll advertise on the contract reporter. We'll advertise, we'll get it on our website. I don't see the need, unless unless we went to like the, the, the 
of the Albany newspaper. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'll move on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'll go forward on that. Um, next, Jerry gave me a list of changes that he'd like. I'd like to walk through his changes that he would like with you guys, get approval, and then I will put this together for uh, um, at our next meeting. We'll set a public hearing date, which could be at our audit meeting. Um, Mike, did you send me Jerry's changes? I didn't because he gave me handwritten comments. So I'm just going to work our way through them. All right. I'll, I'll listen, uh, but I can read his writing. I've done it. No, so I know. You... <laughs> I know. I just. He yeah, handed... no, I'll listen, but if you could send them to me afterward, yeah. I'd appreciate so he it. He handed it to me late yesterday and he yep. said, My notes are in yep. the market. That's fine. Just yep. send them to me tomorrow, please. Thank yep. you. So if you go to. It's section, it's quite a ways in. It's sec it's it's uh section four building permits. It's letter F sorry, E5. Oh, okay. And I unfortunately did not print the the first one in, in it's the one that starts with at least two sets of construction documents. So Mary Lou, apparently the state has adopted a new energy code called the Stretch, New York Stretch yep. Code. Yeah. I've, I've done a fair amount of research on it. Yep. Um, Jerry would other Marble Town has adopted it. Other towns have. He would like us to adopt the Stretch Code. And what it is is it's a it's a it's a energy. The best way I can describe it, it's an energy code on steroids. <laughs> it's the, it is. The state energy code taken to another level. And so my question for you, Mary Lou, is would we adopt that as a part of this code? Or we can do we can do it separately. Okay. That was my hope. So what what you'll have to do then for me is look through this and tell me if I need to change the language anywhere it says energy code. And then we can write the language for the stretch code, which I found I found a lot of examples of that. And it's 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 just says that the town is adopting the New York State stretch code of 2020 right. and putting it into into practice. But you would need to let me know because All we're right. let adopting this at the same time. Yep. Wait till Mary Lou can review this. Yeah. Really yeah. Um, just so we don't well, turn. so between now and next. Thursday, I'm going to try to make those whatever changes. So next Thursday, we can set it for public hearing at the end of the month. And then we can, in theory, adopt it in um, March. So that's, there's not a huge hurry to adopt this, except we were supposed to have adopted the, the uh, building code by the end of 2022. Yeah, and, and what it they is is- do a very good job of telling us. So, so that was his first note. Uh, okay. In that section, he mentioned the stretch code only because there it talks about the energy code. Yep. Um, then moving forward, he didn't have any more comments until we get to section 5C, the remote inspections. As you can imagine, he said he's never going to do them. So <laughs> actually he didn't I shouldn't say he said never. He said rarely would we use this, we would do on-site inspection. So I right, said but it's at his discretion. So you you never know. So my question to the board is do we want to leave it knowing that? Because then people Jerry's opinion is if it's in there, people say, I want a remote inspection. Your code says I can have one. one. But, but if it's the not in there. And the pandemic comes back after May. Um, exactly. It's in his two, discretion. Yeah. <laughs> so because it's at the discretion in there, I, I would agree with you, Mary Lou. His feeling was that we should we wouldn't use it. He didn't he didn't outright say take it out, but he said I'm not gonna uh, it's at the discretion of the but he did say rarely, oh, so perfect. let's give him that rare. Okay, so so we'll leave it. Yeah, I think. Okay, leave it. He can tell people who say, "But you have you're allowed to do that." 
he can say my policy is that I don't do it. Since we only have a tool enforcement officer, should we use that inspector? Um, well, it, it could be, um, the inspector could be the building inspector, so it should be left in. Oh, okay. Yeah, we I don't, just didn't want people to try to, no. since it says or inspector. No, the inspector is defined in, in the definition section. Fair enough. Yeah, man, whatever they want. Yeah. Then moving on, and he had, like I said, he had very few notes. Um, and ultimately, he was happy with this. Oh, good. Um, moving on to the section that was the pick one or two, and that was section 10 C, the exemptions. Okay, give me a minute. 10 A, B. When you find the section 10, it's the third page after that. Yep. Exemption. So that gotcha. It says Jerry to pick alternative one or two. Yeah. He was a definite no to the first one. He okay. wants no exceptions. So we would just eliminate section C exemptions because the other one said this sub subdivision yep. is potentially omitted. Now, my question to you, Mary Lou. Should I include that language? The subdivision is potentially omitted? Yes, because then you can just keep the, the lettering the way they have it. Or we're, you can. Is there a moving C? We're, we're, we're moving the first alternative for C. So C will say what alternative two says subdivision is intentionally omitted. Right. Now, D, again, that's the remote. He says in person only. But. It does say know, may be performed. I hope that Jerry's with us a long time, right. but you don't know. Right. So then moving on to letter F, which is the next page. Um, F4, he wanted to know what all the other activities were, but I did tell him it's everything that's in, sub, in section A, <laughs> which is the, the more detailed, that they've now broken out. So in, in everything that needs an operating permit as listed in, in one section 10A is now included in that. So that includes all these flam you know, lots, all lots these chapters 22, 24, 25, 26. These are now all spelled out in the fire code, whereas it used to just say. He used to just talk about the fire code and didn't include all those sections. Um, but that was the answer to his question about what what's what activities. He said examples, and I'm just going to tell him the examples are in the code. It's you just he didn't quite understand that. Um, now section eleven, the fire safety. Number two, that at least once every 12 months for public and private colleges, uh, schools and colleges. He says, in our town, those are all addressed by the New York State inspe uh, Inspector from the Education Department uh, because all we have is, a, is the school. Um, so my question is, I think we could take that one out because we don't have anything that applies to that. Right, we don't now though. I, I'd, I'd say keep it in because it also says okay, an inspector designated by him. That can be the education department, you know, okay. who they have precedence there anyway. Okay. You know, I, I don't expect we're suddenly going to have a college, but right. what if Ulster puts a, a satellite? Okay. And then or, he had a question mark next to three about the multiple dwellings. I didn't get it. I didn't see it right away. So I didn't ask him what that question was. Well, you know what? I think the question is, is it's phrased at least once every exceed 33 months, 36 months. That, oh, sense, yeah. that makes no sense. So. You're right. I'm going to have to go back to the model. So we can law. look. I cut and pasted this from the model law, but yeah, uh, there's obviously a word missing there. Let me. Let me just pull up the model law quick, Mike. Yeah, I did email you the, the copy of it. I've got it here under from the uh, Department of State's office. So that is in 11. 
it's going to be not to exceed 36 months. Yeah, but I'm sure that's once it. Every... <laughs> right. I, I wonder if it's a year. I don't know. It wouldn't be once every year. Hey, I'm getting through 10. I'm almost there. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Section 11A3, right? Yep. Uh, it says at least once every specify interval not to exceed 36 months. Oh. So we can we can determine that interval, but it can't be any more than 36 months. Do you remember what we did uh, in our when we set the fees last year? We we clarified that. Uh, yeah, I don't, but if we're not setting it for public hearing tonight, we can go back and look at that and put it in. Yep, except I can pull it up on my computer right now and tell you exactly what we did. We can Beautiful. Now. I didn't have it where I thought I had it. Yeah, I don't know if we had multiple dwellings. We had mixed occupancies. That was our contention that we were working with. Yeah. Oh, I know where it'll be. It'll be in our organizational meeting. I mean, you could even just say to Jerry, here's what it was supposed to say. What number do you want in there? Yeah, I, I think we should put 12. 12 months. All the way at the bottom of the organization. Yeah. There it is. We use the dormitory. Yeah. Twelve months. We have twelve months. Okay. Twelve months. So at least once every year, or it'll say twelve months. Oh. We use the same language. I agree with that. Better safe than sorry on those things. Oh, yeah. That's a weird thing. Yeah. Bye, Tom. Okay. Um, and again, on the section B, he has a no, but we're not, we're going to leave it in there just in case. Oh, shoot. What? I just said. So the dormitory is every 12 months in currently in our fee structure. We can change that. But then it says, um, Fire safety and property maintenance inspections of multiple dwellings not included in category one or two um, shall be performed at least once every 24. Well, we took that from the state law at the time. So yeah. now the state law has changed. So okay. we can think, change that. So we should just update this as well. I think we should update this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They shouldn't go to So once we adopt the code, we'll re adopt the fee schedule for the changes. Okay, and I will. I can double check that with Will because um, Will does most of our fire inspection. And he he is more current on on the code. So on the uh, section thirteen, the parking garages, Jerry wrote, if we ever have any. But this is one I I I would like to keep it. Um, I'd rather have it and have it never apply to something, and then rather not have it. And have somebody apply for a parking garage, and then we have to scramble to put it in. Yeah. Is everybody in agreement with that? 
Um, then on section 14A3, the flood hazard areas, Jerry wrote this note. He says, they can look at these, but cannot give any info out because it might cause lawsuits if they're wrong. And FEMA changes the boundaries. Now he's not wrong there because anybody, FEMA makes the maps every so often, but then any person who thinks that their map may be wrong can apply for an amendment to the map based on specific calculations for a specific property. And the map is amend, there's an amendment now to the map, but it's not circulated. Everybody who has a copy of the map when those amendments happen, because what it is is you go to the FEMA site and you can scroll down and you can get all the amendments for your area. But that's why Jerry doesn't usually, he has flood maps, but he doesn't share that info with applicants because we don't know that they're. Right, and, and I think that's okay to keep this in here. He doesn't share them, but this is saying this is what he will base his decision right. on. That's one as, of the. As amended or revised. So I, I, I think he's just, it's, it's one thing that has been a pet peeve of his for a long right. time that we never get accurate maps. That is a pet peeve of every municipality in the country. Yeah, because it, it, it says as a man. So he's still using it for his criteria. Right. And that's he's talking about giving out information, and that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about he's using it for his criteria. Right. Sorry, I was talking about the section A, like the overarching that he may determine the flight max they think is Right. So you're saying he's only talking about A3 in particular. He's not worried about the rest. He just wanted to bring up in A3 that the maps that we have in our possession may not be the most up to date maps. Well, you said you can get the most up to date version from on their website. Does yeah, you, you got to kind of, it's not a real user friendly website. It, 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 it's a challenge, but I'm, I'm guessing, you know, we can even never has it. We can teach his office staff. Where to find it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that if they're concerned about this language of being sued, this, they should just try to use the updated map. map. I don't think he's concerned at all about being sued. It was just Jerry's way of uh, saying, no. saying it again. Yeah. Because this is one of his, like I said, one of his pet peeves. And I believe that that was the last time we had. Great. So, Mary Lou, if you, I'll, I'll scan. Yeah, I'll look together. into the stretch code stuff yeah. and, and switching yeah. this. Yep. Because if we can do both at the same time, so I, I would love, if possible, next next Thursday to introduce to the board this law and the stretch code, set them both for public hearing for uh, the audit meeting. Okay. Uh, we do have to have an executive session about something, uh, but we will do the the memoriam. Um, yeah, we'll do the memoriam now if that's okay. So people can leave and Christina can leave. Um, I want to start out the memoriam with adding a name, um, a class, high school classmate of mine, Lieutenant Commander Tom Rancich, um, was probably my best friend in fourth and fifth grade went off to private school because he was on his way to being an Olympic swimmer. Uh, 50 years later, he still holds records in the town of Pool for his swimming accomplishments. Didn't quite make it. Went on to Syracuse and became the captain of their swimming team and the captain of their rugby team at the same time. Was the oldest Navy SEAL on record to have gone through the, the the uh, to what they go through to uh and got injured during the process and they wanted him to pull out and he refused because he knew me and he said this he said I knew if I refuse if I if they let me pull if I let them pull me out they wouldn't let me do it again 
because he was at the time the oldest person to ever have done it. Um, went on to a very decorated career in Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, and uh, he was uh, a special warfare officer, uh, SEAL. He was um, the Navy lead on counterterrorism. And at one time, he commanded the chief athletic team as their head security officer. Um, sadly, he died this past week. Uh, and uh, just a definite self made man that made the best of his universities and, and really did a lot with his life. When he retired, he created a, a, a business that detonated ordinances off of Martha's Vineyard. Who knew there were a lot of ordinances? that washed up in Martha's Vineyard, and he hired only um, veterans for the company because he just became a veterans advocate. And he suffered from PTSD and really spoke about it and advocated for it. So I just wanted to say a little bit about who he was, and I appreciate you guys listening. So, um, I'm very sorry for that loss. Yeah, his funeral is this Saturday. Uh, uh, it, it, um, I could share, I actually brought a copy of his obituary if anybody would like to see it. That's very awesome. Thank you, thank you. It's, we weren't close friends, obviously, but he he showed up at every high school reunion and he was still the class clown, which is, he was growing up. So, but anyway. So I'd like to dedicate the, in his memory, in Connie Halstead Bartle, Dorothy Fielding, Irving Sch Schlinger, Craig Easton, Robert Smith, uh, John Sim Sr. Uh, there's a typo there, I apologize. Marie Robinson, Marlene Carney, and uh, we continue to think about the people in Ukraine and uh, well, by COVID. And also um, for the, uh, I'd like to add the tragedy in Memphis. So, uh, with that, We'll, uh, I'd like to make a motion then that we uh, enter into executive session to discuss a particular uh, person uh, employment possibility. Do you need me for that, Mike? I do. Okay. Thank you. Dave, thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. So, 